Hello, hello, hello! What's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome! Wonderful Thursday evening to you! I am super excited because we are playing some Rivals of Ixalan pre-release. Rivals is here. I am super hyped. I think it's gonna be awesome. Drake and Walter, good to see you tonight. Typhus, Fire Shades, Autumn Shank, Brew 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 the Deck, Bluster Butts, White Lotus, Voltaic. How's it going this evening, everyone? Oh man, I am super ready to go. I'm ready for some new magic cards, ready for a new limited format. So this is basically just like straight up a pre-release. So if you are going to pre-release this weekend, this will give you kind of a sneak peek. So maybe we can learn some stuff that'll help you win some more prize packs this weekend and maybe open some really cool cards. I want Azur. I think Azur is the most fun. I probably will get crushed because I think the format's fast, but I don't even care. I just want to Azur and Sphinx's Revelation. That's all I want. What's up, lulz? And and average and voltaic uh tomer sort of streams he did for a minute at, at budget commander uh twitch.tv backslash budget commander but i don't know if he has been too much uh what's up harsh tenor so how is everyone doing this evening oh man i gotta tell you before we get into it so if you were around last stream moto was freaking out it was going horribly it kept crashing we ended up being in two leagues at once then all this stuff popped up at once so we only got in one match before moto crashed so i basically i ended up uh, just getting comp for the one league, the one where we started with like 15 minutes on our clock. I just dropped and got our money back. But then I finished the other league and we went 5-0. and We crushed Tron. We beat Affinity. It was super awesome. So I was really sad because it would have been awesome. Like the matches were just really sweet. So I wish that we were doing it live on stream. But what can you do? What can you do? Uh, let me see awesome dude. Ooh, Merfolk, eh? I'm excited for Merfolk and Standard. Everyone's excited for Merfolk and Standard by the looks. That's two Merfolk decks just this evening. Uh, man, they both look pretty sweet. Rivers Herald Boon is interesting. I did not have any Rivers Herald Boon in my deck. Deck out cards! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. 13 months in a row. Big Soup's here for our resubscriber. Just had a terrible 1 3 pre release. Lots of pirate synergies, but no finishers. Yeah, I remember that from Ixalan. It felt like if you get the synergies, it's really, really sweet. But if you don't get the right synergies, ah, things can really go wrong. So we'll see. I'm definitely excited to try out the new format. Oh my god, it's a $100 donation! Oh my goodness, thank you so much from Michael Modi. $100 for all the janky decks that I've always ended up net decking with. Keep it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That is the biggest donation we've had since the crazy donation stream with uh, Alexa. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is, that is amazing. Wow, 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 wow. Big Soup's cheer. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, let's do our reminders, and then we're going to jump into our league, start building this deck and then we can talk about everything why we're playing through our pre-release league we can talk about pre-release uh being our announcement on monday we have rivals of Ixalan coming up modern stuff pros complaining about modern all that crazy stuff so anyway mtg goldfish replay youtube i think that merfolk wants to be aggro slash tempo i think you would need some tempo plays but i think it's mostly an aggro deck in standard at least that's my thinking right now without having to uh having been able to uh really play it am i ever going to am i ever going to update the overlay for donations and subs Yes, that is on my list. I'm not very good at stuff like that, so but yes, I really do want to do some updating. I still want to keep the wide open look because I really like that part of the overlay. But yes, I do plan on updating it. General Urge, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. And uh so, yes, replay YouTube for all the old stream. Normal YouTubes, we played some super sweet Sarkin Tribal, Sarkin's Dragons for Against the Odds last night, which was way better than I thought it would be. It was actually super fun. We have some super sweet rival stuff coming out at the beginning of next week. Sea Town, uh, of course, Commander Clash coming out tomorrow. Welcome to the Fishbowl for the 13th month in a row. Thank you so much for this up. Big Scoops here for our resubscriber. And the merch page, tokens, t shirts, playmats. Uh, I believe we still have the. I heart jank sure if you haven't gotten yours yet so keep an eye out for that and donations we already had a crazy donation thanks again to michael Lamodi for the hundred dollar donation always appreciated definitely not required 
Uh, anyway, yeah, I think Alexa's always turned on. I don't even know if I know how to turn Alexa off, honestly. <laughs> what do you use for the necklace? Overlay, it looks super cool having your necklace on the side. That's a tool that Richard uh, designed for Goldfish, but I think since then, there's like a publicly available similar tool that someone else made. But yeah, it's super awesome. But the one that we use is like Goldfish, uh, Goldfish... I don't know, exclusive or something. We just use it for our videos. Anyway, I think it's time. I think it's time. Let's jump into our league. So this is Rivals of Ixalan pre-release. It is literally like a pre-release event. We get four Rivals boosters, two Ixalan boosters. Open them up, sealed, four rounds. Prizes are pretty rough, so hopefully we get some good cards. And uh, yeah, I'm excited though. It's, it's time for new cards. Mike Ale, okay, Mike Ale, thank you, Mike Ale, didn't mean to, uh, to butcher your name, especially after such a sweet donation, now, imagine if Sephether wants to cash out a moto, he'd be the last person to do it, and, or he kills the game single-handedly, <laughs> uh, Psycho Smurf for the 15th month in a row, as a mid-range friend, you know, uh, I am from all the Twitter messages. Green, black, rock, and standard looks like a good one with Rex. Yeah, that does look pretty sweet. Oh, man, next week's budget magic. Next week's budget magic deck. Oh, my goodness. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's one more modern deck because we don't have cards to actually start uh, doing doing stuff for rivals yet. But uh, So the next edition will be rival standard, but... Mm. Rivals prices won't drop until next week because after today there will be no more entering the system So if you need the cards before like the middle of next week get them tonight Otherwise just be patient and wait till like next Tuesday or Wednesday after events Officially start other than this one day pre-release thing and that's when you will get a much better price two dollar donation from awesome, dude Alexa open the bay pod doors also. Hi Seth. Well, thank you awesome, dude for the donation Alexa, hey, open the, <laughs> open the bay pod doors. <laughs> uh, Alexa wasn't listening to me. All right, we got to jump into it. Thank you again, awesome dude, for the donation. So here we go. What super sweet, what uh, super sweet cards do we get from our pre-release? We're jumping into it. Here it comes the sealed pool. Come on. Be good to us, magic gods. Be good to us. Be good to us. Sort by rarity. Ugh. Oh boy. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at this. We don't got any any mythics, which is a little sad. Bionic Broccoli, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. So as f oh my goodness. Okay, let's see. So as far as rares, we get rare dinosaur, temple altosaur, soft tackle. Welcome to the fishbowl. Alexa, print more Kithkin. I don't know if uh, Alexa can handle that. Thank you for your sub though. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Siege Horn, Ceratops, Rivers Rebuke can kind of be a blowout. Delta Primal Hunger, super big if we can get it down quick enough, probably hard to deal with. Dragon Skull Summit, eh, fixing. Arch of Araska, so nothing too crazy as far as our rares. The dinosaurs are fine. Galta can be good if we can get it out. Ceratops, we need ways to enrage it, but it can be good, especially if we can enrage it. Let's take a look at colors. I see these two daring buccaneers. Uh, let's sort by color. I'm kind of interested in Double Daring Buccaneer. Let's see what we have to go with it. Maybe, wow, we have a lot of red cards. So Daring Buccaneer is great if we have enough pirates. Can we sort by pirate? No, we can't. So Dual Shot, okay. Fanatical Firebrand, that is a pirate. Pirates are good. Fire Shrine Keeper, oh boy, that's a bit expensive. Eight man is all, <laughs> eight man is a lot. What do you think of my Salty Merfolk deck? Ooh. I like the Fatal Push edition. Windy Constrictor is interesting. There's so much synergy, but it's not a merfolk. I think I've definitely got to test it to see how it works. Uh, Reckless Rage, probably playable-ish. Ooh, all right, that's good if we go up dinosaurs. Hatchling is fine if we go dinosaurs, fine-ish. Shatter's a sideboard card. This is a dinosaur. Bombard, four damage to a creature. Ooh, that's another good removal spell. Uh, okay, that's a pirate in our pirate pile. One damage to each creature. Ooh, ooh, that's a good way to trigger enrage. Man, I think we're either going to be pirates or dinosaurs. I'm not sure which one we're going to end up being, though. That's a pirate. Double dinosaur tutor? Oh, oh, God. 
Oh my goodness. Double dinosaur tutor. Maybe we're going to be able to be dinosaurs. Uh, these raptors are only okay. We have Stampeding Horncrest, another big dinosaur. Oh man. Yes, this is open for anyone uh, on Magic Online today. Um, and the ban list starts, uh, comes out on on uh, Thursday, not Thursday, um, on Monday, on the 15th. This is a pirate. All right, let's look at our other colors. So maybe we should just be separating stuff by type. These are pirates. Let's do that. That makes the most sense. These are dinosaur cards. This is a dinosaur card. Well, we could play that in other decks. It's mostly dinosaur. That's a dinosaur. That's a dinosaur. Ceratops is a dinosaur. Belligerent Brontodon, expensive but a dinosaur. We do have a Travel Traveler's Amulet and Double Evolving Wild. So we can easily play three colors. Strider Harness, not super exciting. Okay, so this is also a dinosaur. Let's move into our other colors and see what we got. Keep sorting by type dinosaur in our Galta. Colossal Dreadmaws are big and trampling. Overgrown Armazor. Ooh, that's another enraged dinosaur, which is good. Okay, this isn't bad. Six power and toughness, trampling, three bodies. Double hunt the weak and a savage stomp. Oh, oh man, dinosaurs cost spells, cost two less to cast. We have the dinosaur. Okay. Dinosaurs is seeming like it's possible. Savage Stomp, great removal spell. Ravenous Dragger Tooth is fine. It's a dinosaur. Rivers Herald Boon, okay. Merfolk, Merfolk, Merfolk. I like where our dinosaurs are heading. This is a dinosaur. Interdiction's a good removal spell. We might just be Naya Dinosaurs. I think we might be Naya, Naya Dinosaurs. I don't want to know if we want to play that one. Vampire Conquistador. Human Soldier, no creature types. Uh, vampire. All right, let's look at our blue and black to see what we have for pirates. I'm a little interested in black. We have the scoundrel is okay. Castaways is kind of questionable. Dinosaur hunter. Dire fleet hoarder is a good pirate. I like these two dusk legion zealots. I really think dusk legion zealot is a really good card. Human scout. Tormentor's a pirate. Heartless pillage. Vampire, Sadistic Sky Marcher. Uh, we have a few vampires. More pirates. Uh, oh my god, it's a Chupacabra. Chupacabra is... That's just like the best the best card in all of Rivals of Ixalan. It's so good. Uh, Rivals of Ixalan pre-release events are happening, are happening right now. One day only Rivals pre-release events on Magic Online. Sea legs. I guess that's kind of a weird pirate pump spell. Okay. One with the wind. Actually is not bad. But I don't know. I'm leaning towards all things considered. Even though we have these double daring buccaneers, I think we're I think we're a dino deck. I think that's where we're heading. I don't know if we can smash black. We'll see. But I think what do you think? Is dinosaurs the way to go? Yeah, two Evolving Wilds really helps with the splashing. Out of all the dinosaurs, I think the blue one is actually my favorite. I think the blue one's the best for standard. Naya Dinosaurs, is that the way to go? It seems like Naya Dinosaurs is the way to go. Yeah, alright. Let's sort these by converted mana cost, see what our curve looks like. So we have Huntmaster for ramping. Raptor Hatchling. How good is this thing? Not that good. Ceratops. Dagger 2, Savage Stomp. Interdiction. Double Forerunner of the Empire, which is actually kind of sweet. We have a lot of crappy 4-drops. Okay, okay. Altasaur is fine. I mean, those are all of our dinosaurs, I guess. We have... Do we have removal spells that we're not playing? I guess this is another dinosaur. Definitely would play Bombard. And would play the... Didn't we have the one mana? Yeah, Reckless Rage seems good. So I think our dinosaur would look... Deck would look something like this? Shake, oh, Shake the Foundations. How many Enrage creatures do we have? Is Belligerent Brontodon even worth it? Like, we don't really have many high toughness... I guess it makes, like, Forerunner of the Empire a little more aggressive. But it actually makes some of our dinosaurs worse. I don't even know if we want to play Brontodon. 
Do we have any... Oh, do we have more white cards that are worth playing? These are all, like, mediocre-ish. I don't think this Snubhorn Sentry is actually good. Man, I really wish we could play these black cards. Maybe we just play dinosaurs with black cards? Like, is it... Yeah, I don't think the, the white Snubhorn Sentry... I don't actually think this is that good. Is it good? Is it better than I think? Yeah, the flyer is fine, but it's really hard to cast. White's going to be our splash color. I don't know if we want a double white card. Man, I'm tempted to splash our black cards, actually. Like, we could be... Oh, man. These three cards are just so good. Dust Legion, Zealot, and Ravenous Chupacabra. What else do we have in black that's actually good? I, I really want to play those if we can. Random Pirates. This thing's okay. Heartless Pillage. This thing's fine. Dinosaur Hunter. <laughs> uh, like, is it worth playing these white cards? Is basically the question. We could, instead of the white cards, we could play... The two Dusk Legion Zealots, which are off Tribe, and Chupacabra, because Chupacabra's okay. And probably cut down on... Well, maybe it's just like that. Egg on Platypus, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. Yeah, Squire is fine, too. We could just play Squire. Yeah, we have lots of fixing, because we can play the dual land... We, even, we also have Foul Orchard, so our mana base actually works really well for Jund. Like, adding these cards makes our mana super good for Jund. Yeah, but Chupacabra is insane. I kind of don't know if we want to play all of these cards. Like, is Knight of the Stampede really good with only having 5 mana, 6 mana dinosaurs? Also, do we want to play, like, Dual Shot? How good is Dual Shot, and how good is Shake the Foundations? I mean, this says draw a card. It's probably... It's probably fine. I think we're going Jund. Ooh, Ezra's Gateway Control? That sounds sweet. Yeah, we're gonna play Galta. Galta's good. I mean, I think it's fine. If we play, like, Dreadmaw into Galta or something, that's that seems like a lot of power and toughness. I like the Azur's Gateway deck. Azur with the Gateway. It's kind of a combo. Uh, yeah. So, I think we're heading somewhere in this direction. I think. Sepernal, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscribers. Yeah, we'll definitely play this as well. We just gotta figure out what to cut. Do we need to cut anything? We probably got to cut one card. I think we're just going to run the deck like this and cut one card. Yeah, we're going to play Arch 2. But what is the one card we cut is the question. Maybe... <sighs> eh, how good is this thing? I guess it's okay. It's not great, though. Maybe a... Is it a Dreadmaw? Maybe this Knight of the Stampede. I don't know if it's that insane. Reckless Rage, we want. Legion Zealot, yes. Huntmaster, I think, is good enough. Hatchling is fine. Sun Collar Raptor, that's not that good. Yeah, I think this this isn't a dino. The ramp doesn't do that much. Something like that. Buddy Crone, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. The other thing is we have, like, this Dire Fleet Hoarder, and we have... Seeker Squire, it might be worth lowering our curve. Like, we're dinos, but how many cards do we have that actually care about dinos? Like, Savage Stomp does, uh, I guess, Huntmaster and Forerunner, but we want Forerunners to tutor out, like, Galta, I think. We also want stuff that doesn't necessarily die to our Forerunner when we play a Dinosaur, which makes these Dusk Legion Zealots a little awkward, but I think it's okay. Yeah, maybe we cut one Raptor. It is double red. 
Is there anything else we can cut? Oh, man. It is like $30 to do the pre-release. It is not great value. That much, that much is for sure. Traveler's Amulet. I really like that art. I think that's the best amulet art. Just cut the other double red dinosaur, too. Just cut both. So something like this, and then all of our lands, and the Arch of Araska, of course. Maybe something like that? That seems like it could work. Ooh, I don't know if I've seen the Strip Mine deck. Polymorph Raptor combo with Samet. All right, let's, let's try it like this. I think this looks fine-ish. I mean, this could work, I think, relatively. Green Black Land Destruction. Ooh, that looks really spicy. Gitrog Monster seems like a really cool addition. I really like the looks of that deck. That looks like a lot of fun. And Polymorph Raptor combo. Definitely got to play that for against odds, because that just seems so ridiculous. You think Chupa is the new Reflector Mage to enable our Panharmonicon deck? Oh, man. So coming up next week is our top 10 videos for different formats, uh, Standard, Modern, and stuff. And super special guest for Standard, we had uh, Zach Elsick came on to talk to me about Standard cards. And that's one of the things we talked about was... Chupacabra, Panharmonicon, and one of the things about Panharmonicon is it's really easy to get stuck on four drops. That is that is something that happens because you have like you have uh, you have Gontis, you have Panharmonicon, you have um, Hostage Taker. So there's like a million. There's like a million uh, things that are in the four drop slot. Hang on one second. Just trying to get the overlay set up and then we'll start playing our games. So there's so much in the four drop slot. That is the biggest challenge uh, for Chupacabra. I think the place I'm most excited for it is actually with God Pharaoh's Gift. I think in God Pharaoh's Gift, it's insane. So I think it'll see play, and I think it'll be pretty good. With Panharmonicon, it's just a matter of figuring out the curve and figuring out if it's better than the other four drop options. It very well might be, but I'm not 100% sure that it is without actually like testing it and playing it. All right, one second. Actually, let's do our 30 second break right now. I'm getting the overlay up. Get that out of the way real quick, and then we'll be right back jumping in around one of our Rivals of Ixalan pre-release. And we have an overlay. Are we back? We are back. All right. Time to start playing some games. Archwhale, welcome to the fishbowl for the eighth month in a row. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's cheer for our new subscriber. All right. It's time. Pre-release has started. Let's see if Jun Dinos actually has uh, what it takes to win some games. Will Bishop of Rebirth see playing standard? I don't think so. I think it's a little underpowered, unfortunately. I've been playing an alter version of your non-budget green black whip deck, but using Journey to Attorney instead of Whip to combo with Sakura Tribe Elder. Yeah, that seems super awesome. This is a pre-release seal. The only option this is like our true pre-release event on Magic Online. There's no draft option. It is all sealed. That's the only option uh, going on at all. So it should be interesting. Want to play? Black White Vampire is so bad, but the card seems good, but it's always so underwhelming. Yeah, it's just a little small and a little slow. I think even vampires, you have like the Grey Merchant Vampire thing that drains out. You have the reverse one that draws cards in the five drop slot. So I just feel like it's a little less impactful than some of the other stuff. What do you think the best budget deck is for standard? Uh, I wouldn't get a budget deck for standard right yet because 
we have rivals coming out and we potentially have been in restricted announcement so i would just wait a minute until until like next week because i don't really know right now we haven't played standard on budget magic in a while <laughs> stream mode achieved <laughs> yeah we haven't played standard budget magic in a minute so i'm actually not sure but we'll know more next week uh all right i mean i guess this is fine it's not exciting, but it's fine. And our opponent's mulliganing into oblivion. I ended up going two and one in or one and two in my vintage cube, apparently having three rats in Armageddon is not competitive enough. Oh man, there's some broken stuff in Vintage Cube. That's for sure. How do we want to do this? Do we evolving wilds? Yeah, let's just Actually no. Let's just play a mountain. I think we're going to wait on Evolving Wilds. If we play Evolving Wilds for a forest, we can't untap Dragon Skull Summit, Dusk Legion. And I think we want to do that next turn. Man, Dusk Legion Zealot is... Oh, Chupacabra. The Chups. The Chupster. Pretty sure Dusk Legion Zealot is just maybe the best card in Rivals of Ixalan. The card is so good. Ban Deathrite Shaman and unban Frantic Search in Legacy. That would be interesting. Um, let's get in for one. And let's just hatchling tap land. I think we want to get another black source for the Chupmeister. <laughs> we need a good nickname, nickname for Chupacabra. Banner Restricted Announcement, though, I'm playing Constrictor, Counters Energy, which is something like Tier 3, but I'm still going to lose money. Uh, well, we'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll see. We'll see what uh, the announcement actually says. This thing is big. It is very big. Uh, it might be big enough to choops. Do we just, uh, do we just choops it? We can't kill it with Bombard. It can't attack or block right now. I guess the other option would be just to run out Dagger Tooth. There is actual pre-release events for everyone, 24 hours only. So it started at noon today, goes to noon tomorrow, but it is open to everyone for 24 hours. And then it goes offline and no more Rivals of Ixalan until Monday. So it's basically just to give everyone a sneak peek and a taste of the pre-release event. And then hopefully everyone goes to their local game stores because they love the format so much. Yeah, we'll chew it. <laughs> oh, this card is so good. It's so good. Uh, we're going to come up with a nickname for this by the end of the stream. Yeah, this card is good. Pwn it. Ooh. Ooh. That's actually big and annoying. Opponent's going to go race mode. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Green mana? Arch of Arazka. Um. Huh. Alright, let's go attacking. I think we're gonna try to block with Raptor Hatchling and then bombard. The Monstrosaur. I wish we had uh, held on to our Chupacabra now. Although, this thing would have been a problem if it got in. Bone it. Go swinging. But we will upgrade our Hatchling. Yup. So, we enrage our way to a 3-3. Drop to 10. If we get green mana, I think we can play Galta. Ugh, flying Hexproof. Well... Bombard you. We have... Oh man, we're close to turning on City's Blessing. Ooh. Well, I guess we can do it this way. So... Dusk Legion Zealot. Draw a card. Ravenous Dagger Tooth. Oh, City's Blessing with no art. Oh, Wizards. Wizards, it's pre-release. It's pre-release, Wizards. Don't do this to us. Uh, hit our opponent to nine. Hopefully we can race this hexproof thing. Galta would be super cheap if we...
withdrew away to play it. This is the worst. <laughs> Look how ugly that is. Oh, wizards. Wizards, wizards. Man, if we lose to this flying... <sighs> it's like a five-man invisible stalker. I really don't want to die to this. Why did they make this? The Mike Hypothesis for the 11th month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Yeah, we did ascend on turn six. It was actually pretty easy. Like, we didn't have to do anything super crazy. Pony gets in. Hits us. Down to six. Jebs91, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. All right, flyer. And passes. Hmm. Man, our mana's been problematic here. Um. Well, let's explore. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. Is the game ending this turn? Is the question. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, how do we get blown out here? Alright, put this to the graveyard. Uh, yeah, I'm worried if there's a way that we're... We can... How we can get blown out. So, the question here is... So we can fight with this dagger tooth, which means we wouldn't win this turn. We'd hit for three, four, five, six, seven, but we'd gain two life. That plays around bombard. The problem is if we fight with like this seeker squire, and our opponent, and our opponent kills it. Three, six, seven. Well, I guess that's fine. We'd have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If our opponent blocked here, they'd still die. So they'd have to at least block Chupacabra to stay alive. So I think we can go with Sanctum. I think we can go with Sanctum Squire. So Savage Stomp. Fight the Siren Reaver. And just attack with everything. And hopefully this is lethal. Whoo, we got there. All right, that worked, that worked. Oh boy. Well, City's Blessing on turn six. So we turned on City's Blessing pretty quickly. Which is, uh, not bad. Do we want to change anything? That Hexproof thing is scary. I don't know if we have much in our colors that are specifically good against Flyers. Uh, Raptors, Buccaneer, Corsair. Shake the Foundations doesn't look great against what our opponent's doing. Maybe we just run it back? Choops was great. Oh. Eh. Man, that's only one toughness? That's not very exciting. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature or opponent controls that was dealt damage to this turn. Huh. It kind of works with, like, our Forerunner of the Empire or something. Engineered Fun, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Splash for... Oh, man. <laughs> rebuke is... Rebuke is quite the splash. Uh... I think our man is actually, it didn't work out great that game, but I think with two Evolving Wilds, two Dual Lands, I think our mana and Traveler's Ambulant is actually pretty good for being a three color deck. Man, I've actually, Forerunner of the Empire into like this Crested Herd Caller, that is a blowout against our opponent's deck. We were pretty close to playing a Galta too. Yeah, let's just, let's run it back like that. I think that's fine. Seems reasonable enough. Uh, 
Uh, new Turbo Fog deck. Ugh. All right. Yeah, we, we're going to mulligan this. New Turbo Fog deck is definitely possible now. Land? All right. There's a land. Well, we got a plan. Our plan is to get to this Galta. We have our Forerunner. Ooh, fanatical Firebrand. Okay. Well, we have our Dusk Legion Zealot. We're working towards this Forerunner to tutor up a, a Dinosaur. Let's just swamp past the turn. And if we Forerunner for a Dino and then Galta, life could be good. Oh, opponent's going to town. Well, they don't control a dinosaur, at least. Opponent getting in. Yep. Down to 18. Ooh. Hmm. Well, uh, let's just... Maybe we gotta play Huntmaster. Huntmaster stops this and doesn't die to it. Then next turn... We can leave up Reckless Rage. Yeah, let's play Huntmaster here. Pass the turn. Some guy played Bant Fog at Ixalan Store Championship, made top eight, one with approach. Ooh, that sounds sweet. Have a quick question for you. Do you think Journey to Eternity could be a good addition to a Reanimator Land Destruction deck? Uh, yeah, it seems super sweet in Modern with like Fulminator Mages or something. If you can put it on a Fulminator and flip it around, it seems pretty insane. This is Mundo Cannibal by the Freak Fandango Orchestra. Lightning Rig Crew for our opponent. Well, play the forest. Get down our Dusk Legion Zealot. Draw a card. Land? All right, it's a land. So we're getting there. We're getting there slowly, but we're getting there. We can leave up Reckless Rage. We can leave up our Hunt the Week. Unfortunately, we can't just straight up kill this Tillinali's Knight. Our opponent has some very mixed tribal synergies. Opponent goes attacking. I think we just double block, I think. Yeah, let's double block. Get rid of that knight. Tony Danza, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Opponent sacks, which means... Yeah, we're just going to Reckless Rage, get rid of it. Little clunky, but I think necessarily clunky. Huh? They have a counter? That would be annoying. What is happening? How's it going? I played a Riggs pre-release and completed two and two Nina, Nia Dinos. Good luck with the matches. Keep up the amazing work. Hey, thank you, Mirtris N. Opponent does have negate. Well... I guess we got the negate out of their hand. That was kind of annoying, though. Yeah? Sort of a blowout-ish. Land is good. Land is very good. So let's play the Swamp, run out our Forerunner of the Empire. We still have double green. We've been having trouble getting double green. For some reason. This is my first time catching the stream live. Been a fan for the YouTube channel. Keep up the good work. Sending you a link to my Liliana Zombie Tribal. Ooh, thank you, Ghost of Gaming, and welcome to the stream. Good to have you. Yeah, opponent pings us down to 14. Uh, so we don't have double green, which is a lot of our dinosaurs. We can take this 4-4, I guess. Oh, we just want green mana. Look at all these double green cards. We have, like, a lot of green sources, too. 10 is kind of a lot. I guess we can take Dagger Tooth? I don't even know. Do we want to not tutor? And just try to draw a land? Is there any way that's better? Or, like, a Chupacabra? Are any of these dinosaurs worth tutoring for? Huh. Yeah, I guess Hatchling kills this. It doesn't kill Lightning Rig Crew. That might be worth it. I guess Hatchling... Well, 
pings this, pings this. We get a 3-3 three, three left behind. Alright, we'll take Hatchling. Sure, that's fine. Pass the turn. Oh, awesome, Ghost of Gaming. I will pull it up. Black, white, Liliana zombies. Ooh. It looks sweet and also pretty budget friendly. Man, we need green mana. We need green mana for Galta. We're not hitting Ascend on turn six this game. That's for sure. The Pizza Leagues. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. No attacks. We'll play the mountain, run out, Raptor Hatchling. So pings everything, dies, pings everything, and yeah, I mean, I guess we attack and see what our opponent does. <laughs> <laughs> See if they want to block or take the chance. We could get a free point of damage. All right, opponent decides to play around it. Pass the turn. So green mana, Galtus 12. We have four power, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I guess we're not that close to casting Galta, really, unfortunately. Just started my seal pool, opens a comma in Ezra's gateway. Ooh, yes, you definitely go for it. That sounds too much fun not to. Opponent... Our black cards are so good, though. We got Chupacabra. More Hunt the Weeks. Well, attack with both. We might post-combat Hunt the Week to kill this Lightning Rig crew, like on our Dino. Yeah, I think we're actually going to. So, Hunt the Week. I don't know what's in our opponent's hand. Probably removal spells, I guess. Yep, it's a bombard. Come on, Jubacabra! Or green mana. Good god. Gonna go through this whole match without ever hitting double green. I got three vampire lords? That sounds pretty good. Opponent. Uh-oh. Strider Harness. Equips it up. Yep. Pirates up to a 1 6. Opponent passes. Oh, this is so awkward. It is so incredibly awkward. Forerunner. Yeah, I mean, we could have. It still would have died. I guess we would have had the dinosaur token left over. Opponent. Passing. Oh my god! <laughs> Why, deck? Why can't we ever get second green source? Why? It would be so helpful. Bonet. Flying Dork. Gonna have haste, unfortunately. Gonna untap the... Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, we might be just be dead here for not hitting second green. Oh, that's the saddest. The saddest story in the world. Opponent gets in with the Hasty Pirate. Uh, we did not open any chase cards. Galta was probably our best card as far as rares or anything. Oh, man, that's bad. Opponent passes. No, we got to hunt the weak. Again. If they have another answer, we're just really in trouble. They do. Mono answers. Blinks it. Yeah, that's game? That's game. Uh, un... Oh, boy. This mana situation is making me so sad. All right. Well, we get game three. And I don't think our opponent's deck is that great. They don't really seem to have any strong synergies as far as tribes and they're playing some cards that are not very good so i think we're gonna lose this one because of this lightning rig crew that we haven't been able to kill but i feel like our deck should be pretty favored in this matchup
But I don't think there's any way we can get back into it from here. Maybe Revenous Daggertooth off the top lets us live for a second. Well, Revenous Daggertooth. Hmm. 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 Well? That gives us a chance. So play Dagger Tooth. Ping everything. Go up to four. Whoo, man. Is there a chance we're going to pull it out from here? Oh. Can we stomp? Can we stomp the lightning rig crew is a question. We stomp lightning rig crew. It dies. We get hit for three in the air. We're dead to a flyer. It might be better to kill Lightning Rig Crew, actually. The thing is, if we kill this, we go up to six by fighting here. And then next turn, this crested herd caller is two dinosaurs, so that would that would gain us four more life and kill this flyer from the two dinosaurs entering with Forerunner of the Empire. Uh, we need to fight with the dinosaur, or else we're dead to the flyer. Yeah, I think we. I mean, we could still get blown out here. Uh, but I guess you're right. The dinosaur wouldn't actually take damage here, would it? Hmm. So we don't actually gain the life here. So we actually have to fight... I guess we have to fight with this on the flyer? And hope for the best? If we fight the other way, we die. If we fight Lightning Rig Crew, they ping for one down to three and hit us for three. So this, since we're not gaining life with Dagger Tooth, this is our only actual line. All right, that worked. Now we pass the turn. Hope we keep living and that this Crested Herd Caller can gain us more life next turn. A Flyer with the Strider Harness is very, that's just deadly. But we're getting close to, like, Herd Caller into Galta. Which, that could get us back in this game. Uh-oh. That's a lot of mana. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, Lord Almighty. Lord Almighty. Okay. Well, that's a big old dino. One, two, three, four, five, six... So I guess we got a block with Dagger Tooth. This is game two. Wow. Okay. Well, that's good to know about. Our opponent has an Elder Dino. So we chomp. We go up to five. Man, that horrible Strider Harness is doing good work for our opponent. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so Crested Herd Caller. Pinging doesn't really do anything. Oh, we're stuck in, like, infinite chump block mode because of this Nizal. Play the Mountain, pass the turn. I mean, I guess we can try to triple block Nizal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But then we can't Galta next turn. Problem is we're dying to this silly lightning rig crew that 
doesn't even have any pirates in the deck, but it's wrecking us. Captivating. Oh my goodness. Wow. Opponent's got the bomb. The bomb rares. And that is the death of us. Whew. All right. Well, our opponent's deck is not very synergistic, but they have a couple of just ultra bombs in their deck. Yeah. Scoop it up. Well then, yeah, you can uh, you can link decks here. Modern control. Let me see the cloud sword. Well, all right. So opponent's deck does not seem super synergistic, but they have two bomb rares. Wow, that is a very spicy control deck. Wow. I uh, I don't even know how how do you win with that deck. What is the Wars Toll and Mana Barbs? Ooh. <laughs> that is a super spicy control deck, I will say. We would have had to We would have had to double chump and we wouldn't have been able to cast Galta. Oh, I don't know if we really want to shatter Strider Harness. That doesn't feel great to me. I feel like I feel like, uh, I don't even know that things just went in our opponent's direction that game. I'm not sure we actually need to change much. I don't think we really want to fight Strider Harness. Uh, I have not updated as Conta Friends yet. Well, you can't just not play any removal, I don't think. Like... Our opponent's playing some uh, some instants, but I don't think we can just be like, eh, because you got instants, we just won't play any removal. I feel like we just got to try to time it. Time it as good as we can. But I don't think we can take it out. Pirate deck looks solid. I don't know about Dire Fleet, uh, Fleet Neckbreaker. I know other people I've heard talking about it, but I don't really like it. Dinosaur Hunter? Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe. Dinosaur Death Touch. Is that better than our other two drops, though? I'm not sure it is, actually. Like, it stops our seven drop, but hopefully we just kill our opponent before we get to that point. Nizal is super annoying. The other stuff we can pretty much deal with, with our forerunners and whatnot. Yeah, let's, let's run it back. Sighted... I'm so excited with one of my past matches. Opponent played Blue Red Breach, played Emrakul. I tapped, added 5 mana, sacked everything, played Avacyn, blocked Emrakul next turn, went on empty board. Ooh. That is awesome. That is super awesome. Maybe I'm underestimating Strider Harness. Maybe it's better in this format than I think. Uh, I know I'm underestimating the ability of our deck to give us reasonable hands. Alright, it's horrible. Hopefully we scry into some black mana. Alright, there's black mana. That helps. That certainly helps. So play the mountain. Man, if we're pinched on... Oh, I'm going to be so sad if we're pinched on green again. Just Great Magic, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. This isn't bad. We have Seeker Squire to explore. We have Chupacabra, which is the best card in our entire deck. Uh, I think we got a Graveyard Dagger Tooth here. It would be nice to cast it next turn, but I think it's more important to hit our land drops than to play a random dinosaur. Alright, opponent has a menace -y thing. Well, we did not hit a land, but we do have Forerunner of the Empire. We might as well get in, since we can't block Goblin Trailblazer anyway. How do you feel about blue light control in Modern, and is it a fine alternative to Jeskai list? Scalding turns are expensive. Yeah, I think you can build a pretty good blue white control deck in Modern. Oh man, come on land. Green mana would be good. Black mana would be good. We would even settle for an Evolving Wilds. River Darter. Alright, there's green mana. Which means we get two Forerunner of the Empire. Are we tutoring? That's the question.
is it worth it? Oh, man, it's always this position. This is the second game in a row. So, I don't know. I've actually been a little disappointed with this because we've often been in a position where it's really hard to know if we should tutor. Like, we need a green source. We need a black source is what we want. We need a land. We can tutor up some random two-drop dinosaur, which is fine. But the real payoff is getting a land for Chupacabra and this thing and this thing. I wish we could tutor up land. I wish they put tribal lands in the set. That would be insane. Well, we can't Galta yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need lands to be able to Galta. I think we're going to not tutor. I think it's best to not tutor here. Pass the turn. I think we need to draw a a mana source, basically. Pwn it. Gets in, gets in. Well, we are going to block River Darter. Take two. Hope like crazy that we draw land. Yeah, the tutor puts it on top of our deck, so we wouldn't be drawing a land next turn. Opponent tapping, untapping, passing. Alright, there's a land. Well, that makes our choice easy. Crested herd caller. Triggers once, kills stuff. That was good. That's exactly what we were hoping for. Make a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, no pinging this time. Get in for two. And now I feel like we might be in okay shape. Okay. Untaps River Darter to chump? Oh. All right. Yeah, we lost a creature unnecessarily. I guess that was bad. They didn't get to draw a card, though, so I guess it's fine. Like, they traded Siren's Ruse for... Not that much. Saltai Explorer Reanimator? Ooh. Hello from the U.S., Fodabimos. Brazen Freebooter enters a battlefield. Make a treasure. Okay. Come on, land. Especially a black land. All right. Well, any land is good. Let's go attacking. We still do want a black source, but attack, attack. See how our opponent blocks. Colossal Dreadmaw is big. I think we might be good now. Just the moment of triumph for the win on Zap. Paula and my opponent would have won the next turn was crazy. Yeah, that sounds pretty insane. So opponent trades off, sure. We run out our 6-6 six, six Trampler. No reason to ping. Now we're just hoping for a Black Source for Choops. Hey, welcome, Gurkles. So Salt I Explore Reanimator. Ooh, Panharmonicon's Journey to Eternity. All right, Brazen Buccaneer. Yup. Goes exploring. Hits a stampeding horn crest. If we draw Black Source for Chupacabra, we win. If we draw Galta, it would be absurd. Either one of those would be great. Opponent mills the dinosaur. And passes. Oh, come on, deck. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom! It's ten! That's a draw. That is a draw, boys and girls. That is a draw and a half. Now we get to start drawing extra cards, which is insane. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Arch time. Uh, we are tapping horribly wrong. Draw a card. Hunt the weak. That'll be good for next turn. Well, let's go attacking. Hit our opponent. I think that might get us there. The extra card draw. Opponent's going to take their beats. 
Down to six. Opponent's under a lot of pressure. So we hit a send on turn six, turn seven, and then game two, we didn't hit it at all. More river darters. Opponent. No attacks. More forerunners. All right, one, two, three, four. Let's hunt the week here. See what our opponent does. Zach's our treasure. Pumps a pirate. All right, so they trade, which is, that's still fine. Get in with Dreadmaw. Opponent's in jump block mode. I think we did it. Blazing Naz for the 11th month in a row, almost to the one-year mark. That's insane. Thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Also made our opponent spend their treasure down to three, and I think we're getting there. I think we did it. Yeah, draft is probably going to be pretty quick. Well, so far, what have we learned so far? Uh, we've had some clunkiness, but so far my biggest takeaway... Oh, we have Art on our city's busting this time. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway is that so far it hasn't been that hard to turn on Ascend. And we aren't even really trying to. Not sure about this play, uh, Forerunner. I was going to say Flamekin Harbinger. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet. Well, on to 1-0. Oh. We had to sneak it out, and we played some some close hard games but we got there with our dinos ascending to victory <laughs> uh standard decks are not updated yet but you can start playing new cards in standard already abs and negative one negative one counters we played something kind of like this actually no we were playing hapatra so this is like negative one negative one counters but preventing them interesting I mean, stuff like Amina Turtle and Plague Belcher are pretty above the curve if they're not getting counters. All right. We are, we're doing it. On to round two of our pre-release event. The format for Sealed, at least, doesn't seem that bad. Uh, well, say hello to your son, the Squirrel Nest. Have a good evening. Did I tell a joke? <laughs> uh brick wall paul okay it's a scary name well we got our green mana this time this is actually pretty fine not crazy or anything but we got we got the mana to cast things do you have any tips on deck building i've tried in the past but haven't had any real success oh man definitely check out on the youtube channel like brewers minute and stuff we talk about some deck building and whatnot but i don't just doing it, I think, is the most important thing. Just starting to build decks, put together synergies. I really believe that building decks and deck building is like learning to play an instrument, basically. Something that you learn by practicing and doing over and over again. So that would be my advice, would be to just start practicing building decks as much as possible, even if they're bad. All right, well, we got another land. Our mana situation is going to be good this game. <laughs> Our hand is a little slow, but hopefully we draw out of this. I'd like to know when blocking will be a legal mechanic, if you please. Uh, so I expect Dominaria. I know this has been, ooh, opponent's just going ultra aggro. Well, they're going to get a lot of damage with the Sky Marcher, unless we draw something cheap. Right now we're on the, oh boy. We're on the all super expensive card plan. We're getting pretty far behind the curve with all these lands. Oh, I didn't say evolving wilds. Next time. Next time. Uh, Commandeering Tomer's Mana Crypt was one of my all time favorite plays. Opponent, Siren's Lookout. Well, at least they only got a land. That's good. They are building towards Ascend, and we're not putting up much defense yet. Opponent hits us. Ugh. Five drop tribal. Five drop tribal. <laughs> All the expensive cards in the world. 
Man, we need our Dinosaur Tutor. Our Dinosaur Tutor to wrath our opponent's board. That's been the best part of Dinosaur Tutor, is just the sweeping our opponent's board has been really key. Man, this hand is slow. Arch of Araska will be a four of in one color and two color decks in standard, like ramp and control. Oh, interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Opponent's getting close to turning this on and drawing an extra card every turn. Man, this is clunky. We can't even kill any. We can't even kill anything, and then they're probably going to get City's Blessing. Uh, well, yeah, you're going to draw extra cards every turn. There's not anything we can do to stop that. So let's play Overgrown Armasaur. We get to start playing big things. But this Kumana's Awakening is going to be a nightmare. Hopefully our power can overcome our opponent's card draw. More lands! Come on, Galta. There's a land. Opponent plays anything, they get City's Blessing, and they have free extra card every turn. Any permanent. That's a permanent. Also becomes a 3-3. Also gives that flying. Oh boy. Oh boy. Gestalt Rhino, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. So now our opponent's drawing two cards a turn. We're down to 10. Oh, just too slow. Raptor Hatchling. Well, play the mountain. Run out our Stampeding Horncrest. I think we just go on the big attack. Yeah, we have one day of pre-releases on Magic Online. I think we basically just got to try to kill our opponent. I don't think we can try to block here. Because our opponent's drawing two cards a turn, which means we're going to lose the long game. Ooh, interesting. Opponent blocks with the Dino. We get a 1-1. One, one. Inter very interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh. oh, the jank is real. The jank is really, really real. And our opponent's drawing two cards a turn. Sure. Sure. You do that, opponent. Oh, man. Oh. Man, what I would give for Kumana's Awakening to be helping us. Our hand was just too slow. If it was a normal hand, it would have been fine. Luminous Bonds. The world's worst pacifism. Okay. Jeez. Well, that's the upside of drawing two cards a turn. You draw draw lots of removals. Opponent. Goes attacking. Well. Kill the flyer. Hit this thing. Not sure we can get out of this, honestly. Block the token. Uh, this is just so many lands. Dreadma. Yeah, we're we're in lots of trouble. Opponents drawn two cards. We're drawing lots of lands. Galta doesn't even do it, I don't think. It's not hasty, it's just big. So I expect that we're dead even if we drew Galta. The big problem here is this awakening. It's just, it's keeping our opponent in action. Ah, City's Blessing. So our opponent turned on City's Blessing. I wasn't keeping track of it. Probably turn five? It was some time that was very quick. Opponent. Golden Guardian. All right. The big old event. Wow. Opponents got a lot of rares. Their quality is questionable, but they're playing a lot of their rares. Ugh. 
more flyers. So many flyers. Opponent, getting in with the flyer. Well, dinosaur tutor. That's what we need. Bombard. That's interesting. One, two, three, four, five. We did not get Dinosaur Tutor. Let's get in with Colossal Dreadmaw. Well, hey, welcome, Super Dapadank. Well, for our opponent, turning on City's Blessing on turn 5 and having tons of removal, we're still kind of keeping the game a little close. But it's really hard to beat two cards a turn. That's just so many cards. Play the forest. Pass the turn. Do you think Team or Energy could compete in Modern? A few times when Marvel's League on the Standard accidentally played it in Modern, it would often win. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of the cards are pretty underpowered by Modern Standards. But, I mean, I've definitely seen people playing. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we gotta kill that. Take one. See what our opponent's follow-up is. Yeah, it's hard for me to imagine it's being good enough. And five mana Silver Gill Adept. Sure. I don't think this is playable unless you're playing Merfolk. Hunt the Wheat. Hunt the week, hunt the week. Well? Is there a chance that we can still win here? We attack with Dreadmaw. Our opponent blocks and blocks? Oh, how do we do this? This champion's actually obnoxious. This is really just prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to it? Huh. We can kill the defender, make a 1-1 one, one and attack. We can fight the flyer with hatchling and get a 3-3. Three, three. Huh. I almost think we have to kill the defender so we can attack with Dreadmaw. But then our opponent blocks, blocks, blocks. They're still drawing two cards a turn. We can fight to kill Champion. Attack with Dreadmaw. Yeah, well, we don't trample over if they block, block, block. We only trample over for one. They can't... It costs a lot of mana for them to activate this. They don't have the mana to activate it right now. They need two mana for an activation, and they need it to die from... And they need it to die. That's true. We could just fight with Hatchling on Lookout. The problem is our opponent's drawing two cards a turn. That's the big, the big sticking point. Well, let's attack with Dreadmaw first. If our opponent blocks, blocks, blocks. Ugh. Mm 
Yeah, maybe we just got to kill Champion. But then they're going to flip this Gold Guardian. None of this is good. Uh, yeah, I think we got to kill the Defender. Oh, man. Yeah, we will fight with Armasaur, I think. Jeez, this is a really tough position. I do not know what's best here. Varen Varenit, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. So if we want to try to go longer, killing the Flyer and making a 3-3 is fine. But our opponent's drawing two cards a turn, which makes that a risky plan. We kill Guardian, we attack, opponent blocks, opponent blocks, opponent blocks. They're left with just Everdawn Champion. That's gotta be, that's gotta be the play. Yeah. So, kill that thing. Get a 1-1. One, one. So if we attack, we block, block. Yeah, we're not dead by attacking. If our opponent wants to put their entire board in front of Dreadmaw and keep their champion, eh. All right, they just block with champion. We trample over for four. And pass the turn, see what happens. Do you, What do you think of Lantern Control in Modern? Is it worth playing? Lantern Control is very good in Modern. Uh, definitely practice it and get used to how it plays, because it's hard to play and complicated. But it is definitely worth playing. Oh boy, that's miserable. Hexproof and unblockable. Yikes. I don't know. So, uh, I don't know about this City's Blessing thing. It is really powerful. Opponent gets in with the Flyer. We need an insane draw. It's a Swamp. Yeah, we're dead. One, two, three. Yeah, we're dead. Uh, this is match two, game one. Well, let's see what our opponent does. They, I think our only chance is that they feel like they have to block with a bunch of creatures because they're afraid of dying to a burn spell or a pump spell. If they just block with the champion, then we lose. Yeah, I think this is our only chance. All right, opponent does feel like they got to block with everything. Well, that worked out. We are staying alive because of this block. In theory. So we almost wipe the board. And pass the turn. So we're not dead yet. Oh, not dead yet. We'll see. Oh, what can we draw? I think it's Dinosaur Tutor. I think that's still our best draw. And our opponent, ugh, flyer. That puts us dead next turn. Oh, more flyers. Yeah, City's Blessing, I don't know about this. Yeah, I said that as soon as it was spoiled. I really, I think the idea and flavor of it's cool, but boy, do I dislike Wizard's trend of printing things that you can't interact with. I wish, I wish it was like, if you have 10 or more permanents, this is, you have the city's blessing. I really think that it's risky, and I figured wizards learn from energy and would try to avoid it, because one of the things they said about energy repeatedly is, oh, in hindsight, we would have given players a way to interact with it. We would have given players a way to interact with it. So I, w I figure that they would learn from that and be more careful. So I think that City's Blessing is probably pretty well balanced and it's good. But the fact that once it's on, it's always on is a little bit, a little bit sketchy to me.
I mean, hopefully it doesn't matter and nothing will be too out of whack, but it's definitely a slight concern that once it's on, it's always on. We don't really have a way to deal with these enchantments, unfortunately. We just didn't actually get one in our pool. I feel like if our opponent wasn't drawing two cards a turn, we would have been fine there. So I feel like they drew a lot of their rares. So probably probably an above average hand. So maybe we're fine to just run it back and hope that our opponent's draw is a little less good and they turn on Ascend a little less quickly. But we don't really have a way to just stop them from Ascending. We can't really splash River's Rebuke. Is dual shot good enough? I mean, I guess it kills some stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, splashing a third, fourth color. I mean, we could take out all of our black and go white. Our mana gets worse. We'd get demystify. That's hard to cast. Pious Interdiction. Altasaur. One, two, three, four, five. And maybe like dual shot. Oh boy. Alright, lightning speed. Lightning speed. We'll try it. Why not try why not try the white build and see what happens? It can't hurt. I mean, we're already down a game. What's the worst that's happened is we we lose again? Or we don't sideboard quickly enough. <laughs> eh? Well, what do you think? Yeah? Give it a shot? Alright, let's try it. Let's try it. Why not? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, I sideboarded! What? Oh boy! What happened? Oh! I added them! Well, this is gonna be a challenge. Because we can't cast our red cards. Oh no! Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, let's see if we can jank out a game without being able to cast most of our cards. Uh, yeah, that's not ideal. Salt Breeze for the sixth month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Uh, let's grab a forest. We have some good dinosaurs if we get to them. Hopefully we just don't draw many red cards. Yeah, we were a little bit late in trying to uh, change colors. We have a bad habit on the stream where we don't really start sideboarding till we're almost out of time. Usually it works out because we're not actually trying to change colors. But the fact that we're actually trying to change colors, that makes it a little bit more challenging. I thought we added in the mountains, but apparently we didn't. I'm not, uh, yeah, I don't know. Must have grabbed, uh, must have grabbed the wrong color or something. Wow! Wow. Opponent opened, opponent opened a lot of on-color cards. I will say, I am impressed by the number of on-color cards our opponent opened. I'm disappointed by the fact that we have two red cards that we'll never be able to cast. But it's not, this isn't impossible. I don't think it's impossible that this could work. Uh, do we kill this? Is it worth it? Took out the mountains instead of swamps? Yeah, alright. That sounds possible. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, let's just hit it. We're hopefully going to be curving Big Dino into Big Dino for the next two turns. So I think just playing our removal spell on curve is more important than holding it. Yeah, dual shotting it would be good. I'm still holding out hope. I think it's still possible we can win. It's definitely not an ideal scenario, but I don't think it's impossible that we can pull this off. Crested Herdcaller into Colossal Dreadmaw. It's possible that can jank it out. Less likely with Gold Guardian. Could use our fight cards. Hey, it's a red card that would be awesome. All right, Crested Herdcaller, pass the turn. Man, opponent's just rare city. Yeah, it would be sweet if we could. This gold guardian is making me less confident. Especially since we only have one card in hand, really. Even though it looks like more. Elgraves, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Another huge flyer. Opponent passes. Ugh! Yeah, all right. Now our main plan for winning is over. And our opponent's going to turn on Ascend on turn 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our opponent's deck has been turn 5 and turn 6, turning on Ascend. Uh, I'm pretty sure we would... Wow! Alright, well, opponent's deck looks very good. Having red cards would be helpful, but good god. This Ascend thing. This is the second game on turn 6. They've just started drawing two cards a turn. Not exactly fair. When you have a minute, I have an awesome standard brew. Approach of the horses. Ooh, Sounds spicy. Opponent. All the good enchantments in standard. Horse approach looks fun. Got some caracals. Got some sun mares. Approach to win the game. Seems like it might be able to work. Got lots of life gain for the sun mares. Alright. I think our odds of winning without having red mana are pretty low now opponent gets in opponent's throwing two cards plus they're scrying with search for his kanta plus they have gold guardian wow i'm very impressed with the number of on color rares our opponent opened and uh and also drew yeah there's a removal good god more flyers opponent stack seems pretty good yeah i don't think Galta does it i don't think anything does it this thing's absurd with this end it's already a four four flyer it'll be a five five when it hits us so we're dead in two turns and we can't even attack because of gold guardian yeah that does it well that didn't go exactly the way we were hoping good news is well i don't know if we had red man it might have been differently but our opponent's got the bombs. Opponent's just, they have, they have a, they opened a very good pool. Way stronger than our pool, I think. But that's all right. On round number three, see if we can redeem ourselves. Pull off a, pull off a 2-1. Is the mic peaking? Uh, if the mic needs to be changed, let me know and I will, I will mess with it. Is it too loud? Yeah, I think it's fun to play sealed for pre-release events. I usually do one one pre-release event because I think it's fun to see the new set and it's kind of tradition. But normally, I always play draft for the same kind of reason you were saying. I think it's more balanced. I think that you can get more synergistic and powerful decks. All right, this hand looks good. We have our red mana again. Our mana is actually pretty good. We got our dinosaur tutor. We got our wrath and herd caller. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm disappointed because I think we're gonna end up. 
I think we might end up 3-1, because I think our deck is actually... I think our deck is actually fairly solid. I guess the good news is, our last opponent's deck was really good. So, while having red mana definitely would have made things easier, probably still would have lost to it anyway, because their deck was so good. Uh, four rounds. Four round pre-release event. We got a mountain. We have mountains now. Man, it would have been sweet if we won while accidentally sideboarding out <laughs> our, half of our mana. I've never done that before. I don't think I've ever just... I don't think I've ever just sideboarded out the wrong color of mana. I guess it doesn't happen in Constructed because you never sideboard lands. And when I'm playing Draft, you never have enough cards to actually completely take out a color or very rarely can you completely take out uh, one of your primary colors uh, land is good we're gonna I think we're gonna turn on city's blessing pretty quick this game so let's get down dusk legion zealot so we're up to four permanents we draw a card Ooh, Hunt the Week 2. Play our Forest. Arch of, uh, Arch of Araska has been good. Let's just pass. I think with our deck, we have the late game power and we have Arch. So I don't think we need to play for a quick win here. Mountains. I don't think that's a mispronunciation. I think that's just a, a regional dialect or something. Yeah, hopefully we never do it again. Hopefully we learned our lesson. The one time ever that we sideboard out all of our mountains, hopefully. Oh man, next week's budget magic is so sweet. I wish I could just post it right now, because it is so sweet. I think I think everyone's gonna love it. I can't tell you what it is. It's supposed to be a surprise. I actually get yelled at if I spoil it ahead of time. Plus it, it, uh, I don't like to let anyone know ahead of time what the decks are because of people buying cards and price spikes and stuff. So it's a closely guarded secret. Professional, Professor Cuddlebottoms, welcome to the fishbowl for the seventh month in a row. Big Scoops here for our resubscriber. Has, he says, hey Seth, the Vault of Catlican still work under Blood Sun. Uh, yes. And so glad to catch the stream in time for the pun. Well, I'm glad you like the pun. Uh, it's in modern, I can tell you that. Mike Man and Rainbow Q for the second month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Kaismasil, welcome to the Fishbowl. Big Scoops here for our new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Three in a row. Does it have mountains? Uh, I'll, I will answer that. Yes, it does have mountains. Yell that was probably a probably a stretch. I was I was messing around, but I'm not supposed to. As a general rule, I don't spoil decks ahead of time because mostly for the finance thing is the primary reason that I don't spoil decks ahead of time. Uh, let's get down our forerunner, I think, or we could just kill this. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we forerunner, we could not damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's just let's just forerunner. Ooh, we can actually Galta? Are we gonna just forerunner Galta? It might be Galta time. We haven't cast a Galta, but I think we're going to. I think the time has come for us to Galta. Let's say Galta. Pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can't we can't cast it this turn, but next turn we can Arch of Araska, double dinosaur with crested herd caller. Then the that turns over uh City's Blessing. And then the following turn we finally get to Galta for the first time. Uh check out my brew. Modern Marvel. Ooh. I like it. I played a modern Marvel deck at one point, and it felt like it could kind of work, but it wasn't as consistent as I wanted. I felt like it needed one more one more energy set, which hopefully doesn't come for a while. Pop 
opponent a Raptor Companion ooh dies to Forerunner if we want it to equips it up sure I think we take our beats here so we can turn on City's Blessing opponent hits us I think it's worth not blocking because I really want City's Blessing so turn five city's blessing actually we've seen our opponent and us doing it and city's blessing on turn five seems fairly normal actually turn five to turn six blackjack welcome to the fishbowl for the 50th month in a row thank you so much big scoops here for our resubscriber oh man we're gonna see a galta in action boys and girls well first thing is we galta primal hunger uh, just kidding. We don't gall to Primal Hunger. We crested Herd Caller. They sound kind of the same. Hunger, Herd Caller. So we gotta make the Dinosaur first. So this will turn on City's Blessing. And now I think we're okay with pinging. We lose this, but they lose a... A 3-1? I think that's fine. So we'll ping once. So now we're back down to nine permanents, but we still have City's Blessing. Uh, we won't ping again. Get in with our Squire Seeker. Ooh, let me take a look at your Grixis build, Last Chance PR. What am I talking about? Uh, what was I talking about? It's a good question. Was I not talking about anything meaningful? Uh, this is Weissiger, uh, is a musician. The song is, oh boy, Lina de la Vida? Something like that. The Grixis deck looks good. Looks like a pretty solid Grixis energy deck. We'll see. We'll see what happens with energy. I've talked to a lot of people, uh, and it seems like the consensus is that a lot of the high-level players that I've talked to are running under the assumption that something from energy is being banned. That's the that's the assumption. We're doing a pre-release. Uh, there's a 24-hour Rivals of Ixalan pre-release on Magic Online. It started from noon today, goes till noon tomorrow. So, where can you listen to my music? Oh boy, maybe we'll have to do a Seth music stream. I gotta find some of it. Dig around a bit. Against the odds card? Seven five seven six five six five. Yeah, I think that is about where it's been. Fold into Ether can be a good against the odds card. Opponent. Wait, let's count this up. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, can we block? If we block here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, no blocks. We're going to take our beat to make sure we get down our Galta. One of the cool things about Galta is it kind of has this weird Storm-esque feeling. So we can, like, play Dire Fleet Hoarder, and it's free. Ooh, opponent has Herdcaller. Well, Herdcaller is a nice big dinosaur, but it is not a Galta Primal Hunger. 12-12 Trample. The most powerful thing we opened in our entire pool. And a Huntmaster. Oh! Oh! Oh, we can't give it haste, because this is summoning sick. Well, let's just play Hoarder. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Good old 2-mana 12, 12. <laughs> Fair fun magic. Uh, No pinging, no pinging. And let's get in with a Dino, I think. Uh, yes, I will definitely pass along your best wishes to Chaz. He's just super busy right now with work stuff, so. Uh, if you sent me some music, would I listen to it? Sure. I would love to check out your music. Five Color Feedin', welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Well, let's see if our opponent can deal with a Galta. If not, Galta is going to put an end to our opponent super quick. 
Yeah, Hunt the Week on Golta is about as flavorful as it gets. One, two, three, four. We need one more land and we can start drawing an extra card, which would be good. So what's your feeling? what are your feelings on the ban list? Give me your prediction. So first off, is anything going to get banned? Second, what gets banned? Yeah, pacifism would be sad. Uh, there will be guests. We haven't figured it out yet. The hi uh, hiatus for Chaz kind of just came up uh, a couple weeks ago. So definitely planning on... Yes, it is a preview league. Uh, they, they don't call it pre-release for some reason, but it's essentially a pre-release. But there will be guests, uh, so we're definitely working on that for the future. Just with spoiler season and it coming up kind of late, haven't had time to really put too much into that. But definitely planning on it not just being me and Richard for the next few months or whatever it is until Chaz gets back around. I hope energy... Wait. Attune Thopterist. Attune Hub. I hope... Energy for the love of standard. Torrential needs to be banned. It's restricting instants or sorceries getting released. So it seems like a tune. A tune is the one that most people have said. Not a pacifism. All right. Flying 2 5. Okay. Does have vigilance. I guess that's an upside. Will Zach Elsick ever be on the podcast? I would love to hear what he has to say. Well, if you're a fan of Zach, uh, podcast is definitely something that could happen in the future. But Zach actually joined me to do the top 10 Rivals of Ixalan cards for standard video. So if you uh, want to hear some Zach Elsick thoughts on Rivals and on the new standard format from kind of a... I just like Zach's perspective. He's a brewer. He brews really unique decks. He's always looking for like slightly, slightly under the radar cards. So I'm super excited for it. We recorded the video yesterday. So I think they're all coming out the beginning of next week, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm partway through editing them. All right, time for the super flavorful Hunt the Week. So Galta, Primal Hunger is going to hunt this crested, sun-crested Petrodon. Uh, up to a 13-13. There's probably... Yeah. I mean, that's that's got to be the perfect hunt the week for Rivals of Ixalan Limited. <laughs> and yeah, I guess we'll go attacking. Get in there, Galta. 13-13. Also, crested Herdcaller. Why not? We don't mind jumping with this other stuff if we have to. Uh, yeah, I think Galta might get there. I think it might be getting there. Uh, do I do all the editing, like, visual animations or whatnot? No, well, I do most of the... I do a lot of the editing, like, all the deck techs, all the gameplay footage. But the visual animations and stuff, I do not do that. I'm not that... I'm actually not that good at editing, honestly. But uh, we have someone that's actually really good at editing that helps out. Like when you see the cool animations on like the spoiler video or Brewer's Minute stuff, we have someone that does that stuff, thankfully. But as far as just editing the gameplay, editing uh, pretty much all the videos, I do 90% I do of it. What do you think about a friend's deck for Commander to place cards that give something back to your opponent for screwing them over? Arcane Denial, Pongify. Ooh, I really like that. Uh, I really like the idea of that deck. Have a bet with uh, Rogue Deck Builder. Uh, what was what was the bet? I remember it on Twitter. It was about uh, March of the Machines and the treasure making, treasure making dude. The four mana treasure thing. I'm actually more excited about the four mana treasure thing in Standard. But it can do cool stuff in Modern. I swear, I am really excited for that card. Um, 
12 Taco Cat, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. So I swear I have searched for when a creature dies, add a mana a million times building various decks. And I don't think that was a effect that really existed. So I'm really excited that it exists now. Kira Ashmore, 10 months in a row. Thank you so much. 10 months is a pretty impressive long time. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. Yeah, I mean, I I try to keep the transitions clean and stuff, but I'm not, I definitely don't do like the cool afterworks, put the explosions on the lands in the stream highlights or things like that. That's, uh, that's beyond my, my ability as far as editing, but I can like put in transitions and do that all right, decently. I would like to get better at it. I would love, I don't know if this exists, but I would love to take like a After Effects class or something like that. And just actually learn how to do the really cool stuff. Because I think it would be beneficial. Demetu, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. So, do any of you play D&D? How popular is D&D? Is that a thing that, like, everyone in Magic plays? I'm the, old, the only one in the Magic community that doesn't play D&D? Ugh. If we draw mana, this can be good. Ugh. Black mana gets us to Dusk Legion Zealot. It's risky. It is super risky. Ugh. Yeah, we're a little late on planes this time. It seems like a lot of people D&D. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I'm supposed to be doing my first ever D&D game with, uh, with Tomer on Saturday. So, we'll see. It's actually... It's gonna be... Uh, Saduga, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. It's gonna be, gonna be me and Tomer and basically the people on Commander Clash this season. Tomer, Richard, Jen, Tom, and me. Uh, and, and Tomer is the Dungeon Master? I don't know what it is. Something Master. Probably not, maybe it's Dungeon Master. Game Master? <laughs> Master Tomer? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, I think I missed a sub. Welcome to the fishbowl. Whoever's name I lost in the stream of D&D talk. I can't find it. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. Alright, we'll mulligan. Oh, who told me to mulligan? LSV. LSVU. You betrayed me. Alright. Hunt the weak. Hunt the weak. We're mono fight. Mono fight not hand. Uh, we're going to put this hunt the weak to the bottom. I do not actually. I know literally nothing about d and I've never really been interested in it. I always pictured when I heard role playing. I always assumed that it involved some amount of actual acting. Like uh pretending to be a character file show welcome to the fishbowl and i never felt that i was good at that so i never really even tried it welcome to the fishbowl big scoops here for our new subscriber so i guess we're doing like there's a like a mtg one like a ixalan based one that's like a four hour thing or something so i think we're doing that I didn't really want to, I wanted to just kind of like test it out and see what it was like before getting into like a super long million hour type game. Wow. Wow. I'm glad we mulliganed. Our opponent apparently is missing land drops. We draw a swamp. Well, let's play Evolving Wilds. Get in with our Dire Fleet order. Actually, yeah, let's get in with Dire Fleet. This is kind of working out. Yeah, that's what that's what Tomer said when I was talking about it. You don't like have to you don't have to act or anything, but you can act as much as you want to. I figured I'd have to like do fake accents and stuff, and I just never never figured I was good at that. <laughs> I'd be a pirate or something. I think you actually get to be the Ixalan tribes. So with that in mind, we're doing the Ixalan thing. What race and tribe should I be? So you can be like the main Ixalan tribes, merfolk, pirates, vampires, or, 
or I don't know if you can be dinosaurs, actually. I don't think dinosaurs is an option. I think you'd be humans, too. But I don't really know anything about about races and tribes. The new set is online for everyone for for 24 hours from noon today till noon tomorrow. It's basically exactly a pre-release, but on Magic on Online. The only events that are available are sealed events. So it's exactly like a pre-release. So if you're interested, yeah, let's just start killing stuff. I feel like we should probably spend our cards and advance the battlefield. Yeah, let's keep attacking. If our opponent wants to trade, they can trade. Obviously, you need to be a pirate. Wizards who use cards to get spells got to banish people into the Shadow Realm. I kind of want to be a bard, because that seems cool, because it's music and singing. I don't know anything about their abilities or anything, though. Appa apparently, all that stuff, like, matters. Can I be a pirate bard? Ascend, add a mana, ascend, sack it, gain life. All right, big dino, big dino. Eh, Forerunner works. Let's well, Forerunner the Empire. We can't quite get our Galta yet. Instead, I think we want... One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. The question is, do we want... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're a bit away. Do we take a Colossal Dreadmaw, or do we take a Crested Herdcaller? I think I kind of just want Herdcaller. Yeah, let's take Herdcaller. Herdcaller also lets us fight right away if we need to next turn with Savage Stomp. Merman Bard? No, I'd have to be like a Pirate Bard. Pirate Bard would be cool. I think I, I think I would, if I was going to be a bard, then yeah, probably pirate bard. Yeah, what is it against the odds of, <laughs> of D&D? Alright, opponent plays the flyer. Oh man, this is going to work out well. So I think we attack with hoarder. See if our opponent blocks. Because it's going to die anyway. Opponent blocks. Yup. So pirate down. So swamp. Play herd caller. And I guess we don't want to ping anything. And then we just Savage Stomp the Flyer. Yep, that works. And pass the turn. And I feel like we're in a good position. Now we could use a Galta. Human sold... Oh. Here's a neat character example. My gambling... Addicted Sorcerer, he's a 7 foot tall Dragonborn with max strength and charisma but almost no intelligence and wisdom. He uses wild magic, which means every time I use a spell I roll 100 sided die to decide if something crazy happens like summoning a fire breathing unicorn. Ooh, that sounds, that sounds sweet. Goblin Pirate Bard. Opponent passes. Ooh, it's another big dino. We do like the big dinos. Well, let's go attacking. See if our opponent blocks. Let me check out your Mardu super friends list. Opponent takes it. Well, run out our Armasaur. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll ping everything. Get a 1-1. One, one. Pass the turn. Forerunner has been really sweet as an Enrage Enabler. Mardo Super Friends looks good. Looks solid. Priest of the Awakening, son. 
Huh. I have not seen anyone play that card. Yeah, well, let's zell it. We could turn on Ascend if we drew it. We draw... Galta? Traveler's Amulet. Well, play Amulet. Go attacking! Jay Jackson, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Is the D&D session going to be stream? I would totally watch it. I'm not sure, and I'm sure others would too. I can't wait to hear about your session. Hmm, that's interesting. That's a good question. Would you Would you watch a... Hey, welcome the Brain Gaber. Good to have a first, uh, first time. So would you... Would you watch a D&D &D, &D stream or video or something? Would that actually be something you would watch? Is that a thing? Do people make D&D &D content? Can I play some pre-release events with five ticks that I got from registering Moto? I don't know how I can check. Unfortunately, no. These pre-release events are actually like 30 ticks, so a lot... A lot more than, uh, than I thought. Wow! That's... Everyone... Everyone would watch it. <laughs> the Darn Ninja, welcome to the fishbowl. Well, maybe that's something to think about then. Maybe that would be a good content series. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup cheer for our new subscriber. Critical Role. I know nothing. I know so amazingly little about D&D. I've never seen anyone play it. I don't really know how it works. Wow. All right. Well, maybe that's something uh, we'll look into. I didn't even realize that how much support there was for that idea. I have heard, I have seen Critical Role on Twitter, so I know what it is. I've seen people talking about it, but I've never actually watched uh, one of their videos or games. Oh, sorry, I was I was getting too caught up talking about stuff. Now we're going to get Wrath or something, and everything goes wrong. Ugh, okay. Yeah, I guess we should have just attacked with everything. Opponent's down to three. We get a 1-1. One, one. I mean, we're probably still in fine shape, but probably should have attacked all. Oh, well, thank you, 19 Kev. It would probably be fun with Tomer. I wish we could get Jake back. Jake would be the perfect angry gnome. <laughs> oh, I'd love to have Jake come back and be the angry gnome. I'd love to have Jake come back and do one episode of Commander Clash. I really, really, really want to do that. But, ah, I can't make it happen. I think Jake is just done with MTG content. So, I haven't been able to, uh, to make it happen. Well, maybe I'll have to check out Critical Role. Because everyone's saying Critical Role. And it sounds interesting. And we won. I mean, we got our win, so we're up to 2-1. and one. We got one more game in our pre-release event. And we'll see, depending on how the long this goes, we might even be able to wrap up with some sweet Momir action. There's a lot of YouTube series and popular podcasts. It might be easier to release it as a podcast for production value and editability. Ooh, so you just, like, listen to it? No, I... <laughs> I didn't call Jake an angry gnome. I just felt like he would be a good character. Remember Silent Jake on Commander Clash when he would get so mad he would have to... He would have to... He would turn off his microphone for like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh man, those were... Those were the days. Those were my favorite times. You knew that the match was... <laughs> oh man, could you imagine if instead of Tomer, my friend... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag friend. Uh, it was Jake that got the turn one <laughs> strip mine commandeer. Whoo! He wouldn't have talked for the rest of the episode. And yeah, we'll keep this. <laughs> Are you thinking about doing a discard deck with Raiders Rake and Angrath? Uh, I think it's definitely worth trying. Angrath? I'm coming around on Angrath the more I talk to people about it.
One of the channels I watch on YouTube that is mostly RPG VODs has 50k, 150k subscribers, so there's a following. Critical Role has like 1.5 million. Wow. Well, maybe, well, maybe we'll see about doing videos or streams or podcasts. I missed a donation. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I did miss a donation. I'm so sorry. Five Color Fian. Hey, Seth. First time catching the stream, but your replays and Much Abrood videos fill my downtime at work. And as a purveyor of fine jank, I say keep up the good work. Well, thank you so much for the donation, Five Color Fian. I have no idea how I missed it the first time around. I am so, 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 so sorry. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. What do you think about Skull Cage in a rack deck? Ugh. Uh, Skull Cage is from Fifth On. I know that. I don't remember what it does. I'm actually looking it up. What does this do? Beneath your upkeep, Skull Cage deals two damage to a player unless they have exactly three or exactly four cards in hand. Uh, I don't think it really would work because... I mean, I guess it would not not work, but... I feel like it's probably a bad idea because your goal in rack is to get your opponent empty handed. So having to have your opponent have three cards in hand kind of works against the main goal of rack, which is keeping your opponent empty handed. Did you see that D&D Sourcebooks actually made it to the New York Times bestseller list last year? That's insane. So here's another, here's another good question. Is it possible to punt in D&D? Like, can you punt? There's got to be a way, right? If you were to play Free One Red, which version would you play? Uh, one without Goblin Rabble Master. <laughs> For some reason, I just do not like Goblin Rabble Master in Free Win Red. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Ah... I, I just don't like it. The Funky Oboe for the 12th month in a row. Thanks for all the amazing content over the last year. Well, thank you so much for the resub, the Funky Oboe. Definitely appreciate it. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. I'll find a way. Even if it's not possible, I will find a way. <laughs> $3 donation from Accidental Jank Brewer. Please don't prive us from the opportunity to watch your first contact with D&D. The less you know, the better the content. Ooh, so D&D is actually... Thank you again for the donation. Uh, definitely appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Accidental Jank Brewer. So D&D would actually be better content if I didn't know, since I don't know what I'm doing. Interesting. I saw a shiny necklace once and tried to take it and accidentally awakened two ancient vampires in a lost ruin and almost got my entire party killed. That was my punt. That sounds like a pretty major punt. Uh, so I know nothing. What happens if what happens if you die? Like, does the game end? Alright, let's die if we order. And we'll just pass. We might try to reckless rage to get a treasure our mana is a little rough hey awesome dominish was going to ask your thoughts about someone jumping into modern by building a tron deck but saw the tweet actually tron is a great deck in modern that's part of why i don't like it is it's very heavily played uh but i think it is a fine starter deck in modern and i don't <laughs> Uh, I'm mostly being a little bit over the top and messing around. It's, I don't actually hate Tron players or anything like that. But it does give me a great feeling of joy when I beat a Tron player. Because Tron players beat me so much. Is it indeed possible to punt in one of my earlier D&D sessions? I was trying to find hints about the criminal syndicate and one of my partners in the town and he decided to roll to find the mafia despite not needing to roll and roll a one ooh favorite card in rivals uh, are we casting anything here i guess we just sun collar raptor even though we can't leave up reckless rage yeah keep adding to the board i guess pass the turn favorite card in rivals of ixalan hmm That's a tough one. I think I'm most... Out of the tribes, I think I'm most excited to 
build merfolk, but I'm also very excited for pirates and vampires. Dinosaurs, I guess I'm excited for them, but everyone's excited for them. I think the one card is probably Journey to Eternity. That's a card that I can't wait to build around the most. I think it could just do some really fun things. Are, are they going to be, like, good tier 1 things? Yeah, I don't know, but it seems like it can do really fun, cool things. Not a pump, but a funny story. Full orc fighter with an intelligence of 3 was on the final and got hit in the face by a door after it fell 50 feet, took 5 damage, and gained an intelligence point. <laughs> Uh, man, we've seen... So another thing we've learned, we've learned that turning on Ascend is pretty easy. Turn 5, turn 6 on average. We've also learned that lots of people are casting 5 mana Silver Gill Adapts. And for 5 mana, Silver Gill Adapt is not really that good. I mean, it's, it's okay in the loosest sense of the word, but it is not good. Hmm. Well, let's attack with everything, I think. And then I guess we're just going to play Huntmaster. We could have fought and killed Sil Silvergill. Not sure it's really worth the effort. I want to try to make Indomitable Creativity by replacing the Clue Makers with Treasure Makers. But I'm unsure what would be the payoff without Ulamog. Any thoughts? So I know that uh, Connolly Woods has been working on Indomitable Creativity and playing Indomitable Creativity decks. And I think he's using... Uh, why can't I think of the name of it now? The seven drop improvise demon thing that makes you discard at the end of the turn. For some reason, my mind is completely blanking on the name of that card. But that seems to be the most common payoff. Some of the dinosaurs could potentially work as well. Do you think Swift Warden is worth it in Merfolk? We already have Blossoming Defense, but more fish is good fish. I can see it maybe being a one of. I'm not sure it can actually replace Blossoming Defense. The pumping on Blossoming Defense is actually nice. But I think it's like right on the fringe, maybe as a one of, maybe another one in the sideboard for removal heavy matchups. How close are we to casting this Galta? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Uh, not as close as we'd like to be. Hunt the Wheat kills our stuff. Well, let's just play the land and pass, I guess. This is a little awkward little awkward man we're getting close to hasty galta which that's living the dream demon of dark schemes no herald of anguish yes herald of anguish is the one i was trying to think of that seems to be the main payoff because you can get three or four of them and you just empty your opponent's hand right away and then it's hard for them to to get out of it but we want to leave up our reckless rage I guess this makes all dinosaurs cheaper, doesn't it? And not just not just Galta. Okay, okay, fair, fair. We should have played more Galtas. Are the donations not popping up on the stream? I heard the noise, but I didn't see it for some reason. Anyway, five dollar donation from Zena Kusha. Zena Kusha. Um, what are we grabbing? Swamp. One, two, three. Red, red, green. Hey, Seth, they have a commander deck list. It's very close to the friends deck that I just posted. And also, draws a ton of cards. I just need to update the online deck list. What would be the best place to send you the link for you to look at it when it's done? Uh, so the best place to send something like that for me to actually have it for Commander Clash or something is to send it to Saffron Olive at mtggoldfish.com. That's the best way to go about it. Let's get down our Crested Herd Caller now. A little later than we wanted to. We're getting close to Hasty Galta. We're getting close. Next turn. Next turn, boys and girls. Hasty Galta time. Uh, Yeah, I guess we Raptor Hatchling. Hasty Galta, it's coming. As long as our opponent doesn't have a Wrath or anything. I do not expect Wizards to unban anything on Monday. Although, I do think that they could unban something on Monday. Like, I think it would be safe to unban Smuggler's Copter. That's what I was trying to say. That came across wrong, because I don't think they should unban something. I think it would be safe from a gameplay perspective, but I don't think Wizards wants to ban and then unban a card. It already is 
really painful when Wizards bans a card and you lose money and you lose your deck. So I think to ban a card like Smuggler's Copter and have all the feel bads only to eventually unban it while it's still in standard, I feel like that would be really bad because then people... That just feels so bad. Like, you already took this hit selling your Smuggler's Copters at a loss, and now you gotta buy them back in after they spiked. The Orange Avenger, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. It would go in a lot of decks. What are your thoughts on the most expensive mythic in the set at the moment, Rekindling Phoenix? I didn't think that card was that good, but after talking to some other people, they think it's good, so maybe I'm the one that's wrong. I feel like it feels worse than Chandra and Hazaret to me, but maybe that's okay, and there's a like a more mid-rangey deck that would take advantage of it. Yeah, I guess we're just, uh, I guess we're galting. See if our opponent can stop it. Boom. Two mana, 12-12. Here it comes, here it comes, living the dream. Core dog. oh, it's down, it's down. We will tap our Hunt Master. I think we will give this goal to Trample. <laughs> oh, the dream, the dream has been lived. Swing with everything? Seems reasonable, it seems reasonable. Hasty Galta coming across. We're doing it, we're doing it. <laughs> oh. Opponent blocks and blocks. They're not even going to try to block Galta. Do they have an answer to Galta? That would be very depressing. Is there... Oh, no. Oh, really? Well... Kill this... Kill this. Oh, opponent has divine verdict. That's so sad. We did it, but it's not going to win us the game. We still hit our opponent for a lot, but not a lethal lot. One. One. Oh. Well, I mean, I think we're still fine, but I really wanted the goal to kill. What was the what was the pun? Bonnet getting in. Well, we killed that because it was gonna die and let our opponent gain two life because it was blocked with the life linker. Do they really have like a wrath? Ooh, all right. Bounce a creature. Well, opponent's trying to stay alive. I don't know if it's gonna work, but they're trying. I think it was correct to kill the vampire, because it, it would have died anyway, and our opponent would have gained two life in the process. Famish Paladin. Ooh. Uh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Alright. <laughs> opponent just wanted to show us all their cards before they scooped. We appreciate that. Not that it's going to really change our sideboarding plans. Well, we did it! We galted, but it got Divine Verdicted. Verdicted? Uh, yes. Well, our deck's been pretty good. Jund <laughs> Dinosaurs. We got crushed in that one, partly because of our sideboarding uh, mistake. But I really think we would have lost that one anyway. Five mana Adept shows Muldrifter would be too strong for st standard. Uh, I wonder if Muldrifter would be. We got Cloud Blazer. Muldrifter's, I mean, it's better, but it's not that much better. I think. Yeah, we're gonna leave in the mountains this time. I think. Uh, should we try to should we try to sideboard into our white build? This is our last chance to try the white build. Oh man. Oh, it's risky. Yeah, I'm gonna mess up. We're not gonna do it. Um, we've had a little bit of clunkiness, but because we have two dual lands and two evolving wilds, the mana hasn't been too bad, and we have Traveler's Amulet, so we actually have a lot of fixing, so we have a couple of games where it's clunky, but overall it's been pretty good. So, the sealed format has actually seemed alright, 
what have we learned? Uh, the biggest thing we've learned is it's really easy to turn on City's Blessing. That's been our experience and in our opponent's experience, consistently ascending turn five to turn six. And no one has really seemed to have a deck that was built to intentionally try to do it. Our deck, we have our uh, arch, but we're not at all trying to turn it on. We're just like playing the deck we want to play with a send thrown in. And it's really consistently turning on early in the game. So that's the biggest thing that I've learned. Yeah, I'd love to look at your Sapperling list. Uh, all right, we got a Dino Curve. We'll try it. I say words badly just to piss you off. I don't think that's true. What words? What word did I say badly to to enrage you? To trigger to trigger your enrage ability? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do that. Would I intentionally? If we lose this one, maybe we'll go to the white deck. Would I intentionally say words incorrectly just to troll you? Ooh, sun collared raptor mirror. Amulet. Amulet Bloom. I I used to say amulet, and people didn't like amulet. They thought it sounded like omelet. So I switched to amulet. I'm trying to appease the pronunciation crowd by saying it that way. <laughs> uh, the weird message on the bottom right. Oh, it's some error. I don't know what it means. They post it on Twitter to just ignore it, and it doesn't actually... Uh, it doesn't actually do anything. Bona hits us. Yeah, we... Chupacabra has been insane, but we've only drawn it, like, once. Twice? Maybe both of our first round games. But it's super good. Wow, our opponent didn't pump either? Huh. No pump. What are they doing? What shenanigans does our opponent have? Well, let's get in. Hit our opponent. Down to 19. And I guess we just dagger tooth. Get down, old eggs. We could use a choop. Whoa! Whirlwind, $39.34 with the donation. Thank you so much. Just got a new job in joy. Well, congratulations on the new job, Whirlwind. And thank you, thank you, thank you. That is amazing. Thank you. Oh, uh, well, I hope the new job is awesome for you. It's always exciting and a little, little sometimes nerve-wracking starting a new job. Uh, Golta has been not fast, but we have consistently been able to cast it for like six-ish mana. But it definitely hasn't been super quick. When it is dealt damage, untapped target permanent. Interesting. That is a huge donation. Thank you again. We had a massive one earlier, too. I really need to figure out how to get that stuff on the screen. That is that is something I really got to focus on and get done. Because it deserves to have a spot on the screen so everyone, everyone knows about it. This is slightly awkward. Ooh, can we pump in? We could pump in fight. Wow, and it does it live? Four, wow, okay. Well, that's a new plan. So let's pump this thing up to a four, two. Savage Zomp is really good with dinosaurs. Fight this thing. It survives. Yeah, opponent gets to untap something. Uh, I fully expect a tune and most likely some more energy cards too will be banned. I would be literally shocked if nothing was banned. I, I can't imagine something not being banned. Hey, thank you, Surga. I'm glad you enjoy it. Oh, I missed, uh, I missed the Sapperling list earlier. Let me pull it up, uh, Dikoni. Uh, yeah, we'll just pass. Suncaller Raptor coming through. With the damage. Uh, 
Pass the turn. Huh, the list isn't popping up for me, Dakoni. Can you make sure that it's uh, not set on private or something? Oh, you didn't. You just put a link to all goldfish decks. You didn't put the link to your specific deck. What is this? Tillinoli's Crown. Two mana when enters battlefield. One damage to enchanted creature. Plus three, plus O oh, and trample. I guess that's kind of a threat. Opponent passes. They're not going aggro with it, though. Ooh, there's a swamp. That's good. Well, let's keep attacking. Keep on attacking. Swing, swing. If you literally get shocked by nothing being announced, are you going to redirect any of the damage to your Planeswalkers? <laughs> uh, Connolly Woods. Connolly Woods has been playing Indomitable Creativity. He's a great brewer, too. He's not playing... Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he's not... Uh, not playing... I don't think professionally anymore, but he was a pro tour regular for a long time. Now he works out doing uh, at Direwolf Games, the same company where LSV and a lot of people work doing Eternal. I believe, lest I knew. Oh, we can't actually play. Oh, we don't have green mana. Uh, we have had some problem not having double green. So I guess we'll just pass. I would have pumped. For some reason, I was thinking we could cast a dinosaur. Dinosaur Skull Soulscar Mage list. I don't like bans. Rather than keep trying to find a decent deck with each new set, Copter Ban into Heart of Killing Cure and Kill My Wallet. Yeah, bans definitely suck. I don't like bans either. I think here's my take on the situation. Ooh, Hapatra. I like it. We played a deck somewhat like that. Form of Dra uh, Form of the Dragon is a spicy inclusion. Ooh, that's a big old red maw. So here's my take. My take on the situation is... All right, let me pull it up to Cody. My take on the situation is Wizards just messed up with energy. Uh, they just... They just made some mistakes with energy. And it's unfortunate and it sucks, but... I think this might be just one of those weird situations. From my perspective, if you trace back all the problems with the last year of standard if you look at uh felidar guardian being banned felidar guardian when it first came out people were hyped about playing it in like a blue white red maybe twin style list like twin and modern and that deck with like torrential gear hulks and control stuff it wasn't even very good like it was moderate but it wasn't that good but then they put the combo in the control shell or in the energy shell and it had to be banned. And then a few months later, what was uh, also Emrakul, you could argue, was very good on its own, but it possibly wouldn't have been banned if it wasn't because it was getting thrown into play with Etherworks Marvel. So those bannings, I trace back to energy. And then Etherworks Marvel, clearly because of energy. That's an energy card. So I feel like Wizards just messed up with energy and they just got to get rid of energy. Like, it, I don't feel like it sets a precedent. I feel like they just messed up in the same way they messed up with affinity is probably the best example delavez welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big scoops here for our new subscriber and if you look back at the last year in standard like smuggler's copter yes they should have printed more artifact hate earlier it was silly to wait so long hopefully they learned that lesson uh emerical maybe it would have been banned even without marvel but i really think a lot of the big problems with standard like wouldn't be problems if if energy wasn't a thing. Uh, I don't know if energy would be a thing in modern. The ban list is Monday, so by the time we're back here for our next stream on Tuesday, we will be talking about all the new energy stuff. Uh, how do we not lose to this Dreadmaw? I want to run out this Forerunner, but... 3-4... Five, six, seven, eight, but we don't have double green. This not getting double green is bad. I guess we just gotta pass. I think we're gonna have to block with Ravenous Dagger Tooth and try to bombard the Dreadmaw. Um, it seems less likely. I think they're. I, 
I don't think it's impossible they ban something from red. Under, like, the Reflector Mage doctrine. <laughs> like, eh, we think that Ramen Up Red be, would be really good since we're banning these energy cards. So to, like, head off the problem, we're just going to ban, I guess, Hazard. I don't know what else you really ban on a Ramen Up Red. But that's the only way I see it happening is if they, they did it preemptively. I don't think they'll do that, but I don't think it's impossible that they would do that. Big attack. Jeez. This is not looking ideal. Not looking ideal. If we don't draw green mana, life is sad and possibly just over. Down to six. Come on, Dak. Give us that green source. Hmm. I think we're dead no matter what now. Well, we won't scoop. We're on the not scooping early plan. But, yeah, so we have run into a bit of trouble with green mana occasionally with this deck. Eh, we'll look, but I don't think we're going to tutor. Hatchling. We got a block here. Yeah. I don't think there's anything we can draw. Servant Man will make the gap in the two drops since the two energy drops are much worse. Servant also does rampant mana fixing. Either up is just bad if it gets to refill energy on turn three. My guess, I mean, my guess would be Ether Hub, I would think, is essentially guaranteed to be banned. That's the card that I think is most likely. After that, there's. It really just depends on if Wizards wants energy to essentially rotate and just not be a thing anymore, or if they're okay with energy sticking around and just being worse there's our green mana too late though uh that was a sad a sad story we just we had a million powerful cards that would have stabilized us but we didn't hit the second green source i guess that's the the downside of arch of Araska is it's taking away a slot from a green source all right run it back hey thank you for the cheer Melissa Dora was saying that the Ixalan Bach was her first on the t uh, her team, the play design team, and they actually thought the energy was bad, and Wizard essentially gave them free reign to make a good block. I feel like they've done a, a really good job with recent sets. I feel like Ixalan is a solid power level, a cool set. I think Amonkhet was a solid power level, a cool set. I even think that discounting maybe overshooting on some of the vehicles and definitely messing up with energy. I think Kaladash is a cool... I, I'm not, I don't hate Kaladash. I just think those mechanics were a little bit... I don't know. I don't know how Wizards got to the point of doing that. Alright, we're gonna try this. We have two drops. We have a Dusk Legion Zealot. Hopefully find us some action. Uh, wouldn't banning a tune with Aether be enough to slow down energy? I, d I don't know. It might be enough to get rid of a tune with Ether. I think my thinking on the issue is the worst outcome for Wizards is banning suck. Wizards knows that banning sucks. They it hurts the player base. It angers their customers. So Wizards really doesn't want to ban things. That is number one. But I feel like the worst case for Wizards is they they ban a tune with Ether and hoping that it's enough and then realize it's not enough. And we find, and we realize that none of the Ixalan tribes are seeing play. The format's still 50%, 60% teamer energy. Then what does Wizards do? Then they just went through a banning and had all the feel bads. And they still have a whole bunch of people that are not happy with standard because energy is still dominant. So I almost feel like Wizards, their safest move is to go too far with energy. Because the people who get their energy deck banned are going to be mad anyway. Whether whether it's a tune or whether it's four cards, they're going to be mad anyway. So Wizard is already going to be taking that hit as far as from energy players. So I feel like they should just go too far rather than not go far enough. I mean, there's tons of things they could do if they were going to, yeah, errata energy. 
Wizards hasn't really shown a willingness to make those kind of changes. But yeah, having energy disappear by the turn, having energy be sorcery speed activation only uh, could be a thing. Uh, there's a ton of things like that that you could do that would theoretically power down energy, but Wizards hasn't really shown that that's something they are interested in doing, from what I can tell. Hopefully we draw some lands in this hand is pretty good. Modern Restore as foretold. That does sound right up my alley. <laughs> Hit our opponent down to 19. Run out our Autopic Hunt Master. Ooh, the... I just... I remember the Zapperling deck. The Zapperling deck looks fun. Lots of ways to double up the, the tokens. Some life gain thrown in. Let me see this living as foretold. Alright, dagger tooth for our opponent. Oh, come on, land! Land! One time, deck. One time. Give us a land. It would be so helpful. Ugh, Galta. Not a land. So... Hmm... Man, awkward, awkward. Well, let's play Raptor Hatchling for one mana. Ooh, Myth Realize is a cool finisher for a Restore Balance deck. Pass the turn. I have like three people who play Teamer every week in my Yes, they dislike how dominant and boring the deck is. I don't think energy players would be too mad yeah i think the problem is like the financial ramifications those are the people that mostly get hurt by it are people that just put in just bought the deck or spent 400 dollars of their holiday money uh birthday money or whatever on a deck and then uh, and then it feels really bad marty vampires i think vampires are in the conversation with the new additions from Ixalan. That's a tribe I really want to try in Modern again now with the new additions. Uh, what cards lose value from energy being banned? Uh, let me let me pull up the list and take a look at current prices of Teamer Energy cards. All right, Pony has the big random dinosaur. Um, I mean, probably mana based stuff would be a big one spire bluffs and botanical sanctums would probably drop pretty reasonably maybe like at least half of at least half of their current price i would guess so that would be a big one um i don't know about the rest of the stuff like chandra is still good veraska sees play other places maybe scarab god but scarab god is still strong i think that Scarab God would still be part of the format. So I think the biggest losers would probably be the mana base. Land? Oh, this deck is going to drive me insane. It's going to drive me absolutely insane. All right, get in with our dino token. Yeah, the mana base would probably... The fast lands are still good, but I think Teamer probably wouldn't be the best color anymore if it wasn't for energy. Like, that's what makes Teamer so good. Yeah, let's just pass. I really would love to draw land. It would make me so incredibly happy to draw land. Scarab God's the worst thing about Standard? I don't know about that. Really? You dislike Scarab God that much? I mean, Scarab God's good, but I don't think it's absolutely dominant or anything. Uh, Spire Bluff and Botanical Sanctum are about $40 a playset right now. So around $10 a copy. Maybe just under. Alright, Frill back. Oh man, come on, land. They say Mana Screw beats Mana Flood. Let's see if we can draw land. Uh, our best pull was probably this Galt, actually. Land? 
All right, there's a land. So this means we get to start playing magic cards. Although we're still missing, like always, <laughs> we're still missing the second greed source. That has been probably the story of this deck, actually. As crazy as that sounds, has been... We have had some games that we lost just because we don't get a second green mana. Maybe we do need one more forest in our deck. What do you think about the inconsistency between how Hostage Shaker and Felidar Guardian were handled? Do you prefer a day one errata or a ban? Um. Ooh, plus three, plus oh, and trample. Okay. Pings it, gets to untap a mountain. And when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So our opponent is going to hit us for a million? All right, I guess we take it. And hope like crazy we draw... If we draw a forest, life is great. Down to 12. Come on, deck. You can do it. Forerunner. Uh, now what do we do? Uh, let me, I will get back to your hostage taker question. Let's look at this situation real quick. I guess we got to take this window to fight. Yeah, let's kill the 4-2. And I think we just pass. Boy, do we need a green source. We need a green source so much. So, ideally, hostage takers and... Felidare Guardians are just caught before they get out in the public. Uh, as far as Arata versus Banning, I think Arata before they ever see play is a fine solution. A better solution than Banning if we're given the option. Well, we're going to block. See what happens. Alright, trade's off. We're still a green source away from things going very well. I have not been as impressed with Explore with Panharmonicon as I thought it would be. It's still fine, but I'm more excited for like Dusk Legion Zealot and Ravenous Chupacabra with Panharmonicon than the Explore cards. All right, Armasaur. Come on, land. Ugh. It's a swampy land. Wow. Not getting this green mana is the saddest thing. Do you think some of the decks from Commander Clash are at a good are a good starting point for getting into the format? Uh I think they're a good fun starting point if you enjoy them. Commander is more about playing what you have fun with. Just be warned that they're based on budget for they're based on budget for um, for Magic Online. So there might be some cards that are really expensive in paper. So I would sub those out. I don't think you really got to spend a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, we have a ton of fixing. We have, a t we have more green sources than anything else. And we have... Evolving Wilds, we got a Green Black Duel, we got a Traveler's Amulet. If you look at our deck, it's probably one, two, three. It's probably close to like 50% green sources at the moment. Well, I guess we just kill this thing. While our opponent is tapped out and doesn't have any tricks, they get a 1-1. One, one. Pass the turn, keep waiting for the green source to make our world go round. Uh, I think playing black is correct. 
maybe our deck should have one more forest. That might be a mistake. But I think this is still where we want our deck to be. Bone is going to keep attacking. Gregorith, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Well, trade off. Hope for green manas. Alright, Pony gets a treasure. And a 3-3. Three, three. Green mana? No. I'll play a Forerunner. We'll take a peek. I don't think we're tutoring for a dinosaur here. Let's see how many green sources are in our deck. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so eight. Not 50%, but there's still eight in our deck. Play Arch. Pass the turn. Hope for that green source before we die. Can you tell me why all the cheap pre-built commander decks have a soul ring? My opinion card totally broken and just favors the player who draws it. Wouldn't it be better not to put those in each of the decks? That is a great question, Fungasaur. Uh, I agree with you 100%. I think that soul ring should just be banned in commander. I know that's a controversial topic and some people love it, but I feel like it would just be better if it was not in commander. Does our opponent have the 6-6 six, six trample? They do. Well, do we draw green mana? The age-old question for our deck. Opponent gets in for three. We got to take it. Man, we're going to lose this match by not drawing a second green source, aren't we? Chupacabra would be great. Chupacabra would be... If we're not going to draw a green source, Chupacabra would be my favorite draw here. Yeah, we're not going to time out. We're either going to die or... Ugh. Ugh. That is a super slow way to get green mana. I didn't even count Dire Fleet Hoarder, but that is another way to get a green source for a minute. I think we're going to die because of that, though. I'm pretty confident that we're going to die here. As sad as that is. And Pony has the big trampling dinosaur, and that's going to end our life. We just, we got mana screwed into oblivion, unfortunately. Wow. Bullet Bill, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Pony on the huge attack. Yeah, we're dead. We're just literally dead. Block, block. Yeah, that does it. Wow. Yeah, we just didn't get the green mana, unfortunately. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, that is a sad way for our pre-release to end. Wow, it's a red source. Yeah, that does it. Well, so what do we learn about Rivals of Ixalan pre-release? Uh... I don't think we should have went white. The white cards were pretty bad, honestly. Uh, the white cards just weren't very good. So as far as Rivals pre-release, we learned... I don't even know if we can find this deck, actually, to pull it back up and talk about it. Maybe. It's not easy to find limited decks, because they're... Oh. Huh. Nope. That's an old VMA deck. Can we go back to the League? Okay. Let's see. Deck? Alright, so... So, what do we learn about Rivals of Ixalan pre-release sealed? To get ready for pre-release. So, uh, Ascend was great. Ascend was easy to turn on. People consistently did it turn 5 or turn 6. Going out of this sealed, at least 4 sealed. I don't know about draft. Draft is super fast in Ixalan. Uh, but at least in Sealed, I would value Ascend very highly. 
It seems like it is super easy to turn on and very powerful. So if you get good as end cards in your sealed pool, I would definitely go for it. I think that it is very powerful and sealed. As far as the rest of the stuff, uh, Chupacabra was great. Forerunner was awkward. Um, it was good at sweeping the board and has some really strong synergies, but that was its main value in our deck was triggering enrage tutoring up dinosaurs actually we chose not to do it more than we chose to do it mostly because we were often looking for a land drop so i feel like it, the tutor ability could be good in some situations but it was mostly good as a way to trigger enrage and also to wipe our opponent's board playing like this herd caller and doing two damage to anything got us out of a lot of situations uh galta eh I think it's actually mediocre. It's it's cool and it's flashy, but it is challenging to cast. I guess the upside of Galta is a lot of removal, especially in like white and blue we saw was enchantment based. So if our opponent's using blue removal to tap stuff down, Galta's a little bit better. But I feel like, eh, I don't know. It can be pretty powerful, but even once you get it down, it still gets hit by the pacifism effects and the we got a divine verdict when we thought it was going to win us the game. So I think our deck was fine. We didn't really open any bombs. It was just kind of a medium bomb free type deck i guess you could consider galta a bomb but after playing this league i don't think it's a bomb i think it's like a colossal dread maw basically like roughly there it's bigger and it closes out the game faster uh and it's probably a little bit better but i don't think it's significantly better than that and as far as the mana i think we should have played one more forest but i think you can easily play three colors in this deck uh, I think we just didn't run especially good as far as our mana in some games, but with two Evolving Wilds and two Dual Lands, I would definitely play Jund again. I would probably add in one more Forest, probably cutting, uh, I don't know, probably like a Mountain maybe, but I would definitely run back the same deck with the same mana, and I think it would, uh, I think it would be fine. So that's uh, that's our sealed league for Rivals of Ixalan. It seems fun. Definitely a lot slower than draft. So hopefully it was helpful for pre-release this weekend and kind of fun. Uh, I don't know if Galta... So the thing with Galta, we could probably spend a long time talking about Galta. But the problem with Galta is it's uncastable if your opponent kills your other stuff. So there's times when you play 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop five drop and then your six drop is galta and that's pretty good i mean a 12 12 trample is pretty good that's bigger than colossal dread maw but the problem is if your opponent and you're going on that curve and they kill your your i don't even know what the four drop is your four power or three power four drop or your big five drop then suddenly you're stuck with galta left in your hand so i don't know i don't know uh, i don't think we're gonna open the prize packs the you can email me decklist at saffronolive at mtggoldfish.com. These events are actually really bad value. They're 30 tickets, and the prize is we went 2-2 two and two and got 3 packs left. So I think I got to sell the prize packs to try to not just lose $30 on, uh, on one sealed event, which is... That's a really expensive event. They'll be cheaper once they start the actual events uh, on Monday. So, let's see where we're at. I don't think we're going to do another one. Oh, man. It's almost 9 o'clock already. That actually might just... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just opening prize packs is not usually a good idea. We open the treasure chest when we win them. But on Magic Online, you pretty much never want to open the prize packs. They're, they're just... The value is just so bad. But we always open the treasure chest. <laughs> it's just man people really want to open the treasure uh the prize bags oh my goodness all right all right all right if you really want to if you really want to open them we'll open them all right so we got three excellent pies bags why not why not we might as well so prize bag number one it's it's a bad idea but you guys were awesome we got good donations Eh, never open the packs is the correct rule. I hate opening non-treasure chests on Magic Online. I really, really do. We are going to lose value, but people really want me to. I would, I would, 
I will eat the value for all of you. Or we could just play a game of Momir. That's the that's the other possibility. We could we could sell I would rather sell these for treasure chests, honestly. That would be that would be a smarter a smarter move probably. Uh Galta I don't think is worth much of anything. Uh, I don't wanna do it. All right, I we'll do a straw poll. That's and all right, we'll do a straw poll, and that will determine if we open it. You all can vote, and I will I will let the people speak, and we will do whatever whatever you all want. Uh, also, why we're getting the straw poll up? I think we're just gonna wrap up tonight with a game of Momir. So let's pull up the Momir list. On the Momir list, Spam Dude at the top, Draken V, Draken Vulture, Mage Knight, followed by Commando Zacco and Andy41188. So if you are on the Momir list and you want to play some Momir, jump in and send me a challenge on Magic Online why I am doing this straw poll. All right. Setting up the straw poll, and then we'll we'll talk some Panharmonicon, talk some rivals or whatever, play a game of Momir. That's a nice fun way to end up the stream. All right, there's there's the straw poll. There's the straw poll. So give me your votes, and I will do whatever y'all say. That's the rule. I will do whatever you say. And. Uh, yeah, if you're on the Momir list, send me your challenge. Send me your challenge. And yeah, we'll be back on Tuesday, and we're definitely going to be hitting up Constructive. We've had some weird streams lately. We had Limited with Tomer doing Vintage Masters. We had the clunky stream when uh, everything was breaking and we weren't really able to stream. Then we had pre-release. So if you've been missing our fun, janky, constructed stuff, don't worry. We will be back to it next week. We will be... Jumping right back into where we should be. Also, hopefully by Thursday, there'll be enough Rivals cards around that we should be able to start playing some new Rivals stuff. The BNR announcement will be done. So we will have that going on too, which will be sweet. All right. Momir Lay achieved. Uh, Ush Bros, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. And Wonderwagar, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. All right, so uh, last call for Momir list. If no one from the Momir list sends me a challenge uh, in the next few seconds, we'll just open it up to challenges. So last call if you're on the Momir list. Let's see where we're at with this, with this straw poll. Are we going to have to open the packs? Yes or no? Results... Noah's actually winning. Well, get in your votes. Get in your last votes on the straw poll. Noah's up 56 to 44% right now. And last call for Momir list. If you're on the Momir list, send in your challenge or you're going to lose your slot. We're just going to open it up to anyone. And uh, first challenge will we'll get it. Well, it looks like the vote is no, I think. Well, I'm proud of you. You know Magic Online and that it's a bad idea to open chess. Uh, straw poll is here. All right, so I guess since no one in the Momir list is speaking up, send me, send me your, uh, send me a challenge. First Momir challenge on Magic Online. I will accept, and we will wrap up with a quick game of Momir tonight. That's true. I do like my value, and opening chess is like the opposite of value. All right, we have a Momir challenge. I think that the... Sorry, Lulz, you got beat out by a split second by Crewman. Primo for the 15th month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Uh, have I ever played the Mojo Stow variant? I have not. I have heard of it, but I've never actually played it. I think it would be interesting. I'm going to have to get a deck, and when we do a, a Momir match... If you're a Mojo Stow player, we'll play that instead. Because I actually do want to try it out. Because it sounds pretty cool. 
Ooh, opponent's got the Intimidating Guru Mountains. Yeah, sorry, challenge has been accepted, if you're still uh, sending in your challenges. Swamp Goo. Uh, so, you just, to challenge, you type in someone's username, I believe, in the home screen, or add them as a, a friend on the home screen, uh, and then you have the option to challenge. Opponent's just going to skip the two-drop. Yeah, we finished two and two. Our deck was okay. It wasn't bomb heavy. We got beat by a really good blue white deck. And then we we lost to having some mana troubles with our three color deck. Which, eh, I mean it's a three color deck. Air of the Wilds. So that's gonna happen sometimes. But I feel like I feel like our deck was okay. It wasn't great, but it was fine. We didn't really open any mythics, and we didn't really have any great rares we had two rare lands which are eh, and uh a river's rebuke that we can play and then a couple of dinosaurs which were fine oh man it's it's a sex monkey <laughs> that's the only place i ever see this card the only time i ever get to say sex monkey is when we play momir <laughs> and then every once in a while crows and war chief well hopefully we get some beasts let's attack Mojo so does sound fun. What do you think the best prison deck is in modern except Lantern? Uh, I really like this Solemnity deck right now. I mean, also like the red, white, blood moon, sun and moon, whatever it is, deck is good. Uh, free win red is pretty good. But I'm on the Solemnity lock plan. Ooh, Beetleback Chief. That's a lot of value. Split up across four bodies, three bodies. It was literally monkeys. It was literally monkeys doing it. I can't believe. The funniest part about that card is. Could you imagine now that ever slipping through? Could you ever imagine that slipping through and being printed now? There is no way that that would ever happen now. And I almost can't believe it happened then. Like, how in the world did some artist manage to stick that on a magic card and no one catch it and it go through to printing? Or maybe they were okay with it, and they just didn't, they were fine with it at the time. So the reason for skipping drops is you normally want to get to, you normally want to get to eight drops, because that's where a lot of the power is. So if you're on the play, you got to skip two drops, or you run out of cards before you get to eight drops. If you're on the draw, you got to skip one drop, or else you run out of cards before you get to eight drops. Battlefield Eagle. Target creature gets plus two. All right, Banshee. You can be flying. Banshee deals half X damage rounded down to target creature or player and half X damage rounded up to you. I mean, I get, is this good? I guess I can kill things. This multi-form wonder is annoying. We're not going to attack into this multi-form wonder. Opponent, Coal Hauler Swine. When it's dealt damage, deals that much damage to each player. It is actually hauling coal. This card never really did anything. Oh, Multiform Wonder. It's kind of funny because energy is so good. I guess that's the problem is the other energy cards are so good that... It's hard to do anything with it. Should we try to start killing things with Banshee? So, for two, for two mana, we kill a goblin and make a four drop. Do we even care about a goblin though? I guess we just kill, I guess we just make a six drop. That's probably better than killing a goblin. There's some pretty good six drops to hit. Yeah, ooh, Endbringer. Oh, the one time I wish I had a waste in my deck. Well, that's a more efficient way of killing goblins, at least. Oh, we lost our last match, Filthy Casuals. We got very stuck on mana. We couldn't get a second green source, and it ended up biting us. Yeah, I think Multiform Wonder is cool. 
it seems like maybe it could be good enough. It's like not that far away. Oh, Molten Primordial. That's good enough. That's a lot of damage. Six. Are we dead? I don't think we're dead, but jeez, we're close. Maybe we should have killed a goblin. Back in the old Simic Evolve vids, you mentioned you were collecting up all the janky decks that beat you in a hilarious way, and you uploaded them. Had that already happened, or is it scheduled, or was it just forgotten? That is a good question. Uh, that would be a good highlight video, I think, but I have not done that yet. I still think that is a great idea, though. I guess the, the best answer to that is kind of I forgot about it, I guess. All right, how do we get out of this? Play a Swamp, make a seven. We've still never been phaged. Will the streak continue? Crowd favorites, ugh. Well, kill a goblin. Maybe we're okay. I remember playing a mono brown Eldrazi as one once. Hmm. The hilarious artifact deck that beat your Spellweaver Volute deck. Yeah, I can't believe that hand that they had. They had to just like spew everything on turn two or turn three or something with Heartless Summoning. They definitely were living the dream in that one. Bone it. A drop, Lash Weed Lurker. Not very good if you don't get the cast trigger. Turns out three Vampire Lords and only two Vampires. And a Call to the Feast is good enough for the 4 -0. Well, I guess the Vampire Lords pump each other. So that's the, the upside. Opponent's going on the big attack. Whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to each player. <sighs> okay. Pumps it. Well. Block. 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 So we're kind of staying alive-ish. Uh. So now we got to ping this thing. So now our opponent has to either activate now when our eagle lives or they wait and then damage resolves and they lose. All right. So we get to keep our eagle. What are good white black vampire sideboard cards in standard? Uh, it's really hard to build a sideboard until we see what happens with the metagame and the ban and restricted announcement. But I would be looking at right now, uh, Ixalan's binding type stuff. Ixalan's binding and cast out are good. I would keep an eye out for uh, something to fight mono red, ramen on bread. Probably Authority of the Consoles, maybe. Vraska's Contempt is another solid sideboard removal option. So, stuff like that at the moment. But I think we really gotta wait and see what the meta looks like. Fumigate could be a good option, potentially. Ugh. Alright, well, Bounce Kraken. I guess it's not the worst time for a Bounce Kraken, but not a super great time. Pass the turn. Solemnity, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess if you have room, Solemnity. Uh, I wish Solemnity was good enough and we just didn't have these problems. What would Solemnity need to be good enough is a question. Oh, ouch. Okay. Well, we're on the six drop plan. I think maybe Solemnity, if it was two mana, if it was two mana, it might be good enough. Or if it was... One or two mana might be good enough. Or maybe if it was like three mana, but it removed all energy counters along with preventing future ones. But man, it was... It's beginning a combat on each opponent's turn. Tap a creature. Ooh. All right, that actually keeps us alive for a minute. Yeah, the life gain vampire isn't bad. Good Panharmonicon option. Opponent. Makes a. Okay. Goes Chieftain. Well, I don't know if our six drops can beat our opponent's eight drops, but we're not dead yet. And there are some bomby six drops. 
Animation Angel, I think, is the best, or Royal Elemental. Either of those. Hmm. Alright, I guess we just hit our opponent with the Foundry Champion. And get in there with our Leviathan. Maybe, maybe we're sneaking out this win somehow. Oh, Primeval Titan would be great. Solemnity with an Ether Snap style trigger, one mana Solemnity with Hexproof. Ooh, I don't really play Momir. Is there a reason to keep two colors activated instead of getting more? Um, most of the best activated abilities. Oh, Magmatic Force. Not gonna tap our way out of that. Yup. Okay. Um, most of the best activated abilities are in red or black, and then you avoid detrimental land walk abilities and stuff like that by staying out of the other colors so that's the main reason some people play more colors of lands playing mostly swamps and for uh, swamps and mountains and then only playing other lands is necessary is kind of the most widely accepted strategy but some people just play out all their colors and think that that's best so there it's not really like one right way about it the Titan is Vigilant, so I guess we could have gotten in another hit there. Good call. Uh, although he still would have died to Magmatic Force, unfortunately. That's how most people play, Spencer. Uh, that's that's kind of... I think so. My strategy is to only play Swamps and Mountains, but also keep some lands in my hand until I'm not making... Ooh. Until I'm not making any more land drops for in case I hit something that wants it. If I hit a great activated ability in another color, then I'll definitely play the land of that color. But until then, I try to just keep it in, uh, keep it to swamps and mountains. Azure Mage. Now yeah, it's a little slow. Yeah, well, let's get in with Pains here. If our opponent wants to kill it, fine. We'll trade off our card draw two drops. Uh, normally one drops are not made. They're just not very impactful. So most people wait till two or three. Yeah, that's the great thing about Momir. You do not have to fear the ghosts. Opponent, swamp. And... Master of Arms. Tap target creature blocking... Huh? No. No. Tap target creature blocking Master of Arms. How is that a how is that a card? What did this do something under the old rules? Was there some reason that tapping a creature did it like prevent the damage under six edith chin rules or something? There's there's gotta be. That's That's like, it doesn't do anything. Alright, we'll make a 4 drop. You can make 0 drops. Tap target creature blocking it. So after it's blocked, sure you can tap it, but it's still taking damage. It can't tap creatures until after it's already blocked it. So you tag this into a 3-3, three, three, and then you pay 2 mana to tap it. Maybe under the old rules. So it's removing it from combat? I wonder, maybe... Usually Magic Online has the most up-to-date wording. Norwood Priestess, not very helpful in Momir. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can... Yeah, combo with Royal Assassin? <laughs> Ooh, Karn... The Silver Golem. Karn coming back! We're gonna get to see a Karn again. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe under the old rules, it must have removed it from combat. That's gotta be. That's the only thing that makes sense, is like, this ability actually did something back under the old rules, but now it just looks silly. Sliver Legion is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Hopefully we get a Sliver. That would be spectacular. Saramano first to dream. Ugh. Power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. That's a tough that's a tough sell. 
in Momir. We'll see. Maybe we can make it work. Pouncing lands is pretty painful. Opponent, six drop. Flameborn Helion. Attacks, attacks. And let's block with Karn. Uh, I don't think we can just start drawing cards. We got to make a seven. We're pretty behind on the board. Uh, Soromano is not great in Momir. Ooh. That is good in Momir. Overseer of the Damned. We will kill Sliver Legion. We don't get the zombies, though, because these are all technically tokens. Get in with Zoromano. Are you going to play Phage Roulette? We'll probably go up to making eight drops. I've still never just hit a hit a phage. Still hasn't happened. How can you join Momir matches? Uh, there's actually a setting if you go to the... Ooh. Simic Sky Swallower is big and flying. Opponent's getting in. Well, we're going to block. Hmm. Return a land. Oh, it's such a painful ability in Momir. It does let us keep this alive. Ugh. It is really fun. Yeah, I'm sure there's some things you can do with it. It's just really awkward that you have to be blocked to do it, and you can't tap it pre-block. Oh, whatever. We're just going to let it die. Yes. I don't think it's worth it. It's too much. Too much effort. So we're just going to make an 8. Let the Soromano die. Ugh. We traded it for a Colony Hydra, which I guess eats this Flameborn Helion, but now we have the Simic Sky Swallower that's a problem. Uh, Phage, as far as I know, is still in Momir, because I definitely have known people who have hit it, although we have never actually hit it. Opponent! Should probably attack with the, yeah, Sky Swallower. Well, we get to kill this thing. Arcbound Overseer is going to get, going to get big. All right, let's get a good eight. Uh, okay, that does deal with our opponent's stuff. Get in with Colony Hydra. Well, I guess we get in with the Flyer, too. Hit our opponent with both. Opponent, double blocks. Are they going to... I guess they can't use Master of Arms anyway. Pass the turn. Well, that's our opponent get. This is where Momir gets super swingy. Tidespawn Tyrant's not bad. Well, I guess we just Dragon Wrath and make a two drop. Actually, we should probably just kill the ground creatures and get in for 10. That's, that's working. Scourge is pretty strong. Uh, brew, brew, brew. You're all aboard the PUBG train. Would you mind taking a look at, our, uh, at a list? Blue, white, token brew. I do like blue, white tokens. Opponent, Godsire. Godsire is good, but I don't know if it's going to save our opponent here. Well, let's spin the wheel. If we hit a hasty fire, we win right now. 
Ugh. Meosian. Not super helpful. Well, our opponent's got to hit a flyer. Minimum. Or kill us. Blue-white tokens. Ooh, polymorph tokens. Hoof? Seventeen. All right, we're good. We survive. Whoo! Karn, the silver blocker, gonna keep us keep us going. Yeah, we'll just block block. Yeah, I think the blue white token list looks pretty fun. Might need a little bit more token production. I guess Legion's Landing counts. Well, maybe that's fine. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think it looks uh, looks pretty good. Nine is pretty much just worse than eight for the most part. Eight has pretty much all the most powerful things. The main benefit of nine is there's not anything that is negative or hurts you in any way. So sometimes if you're really far ahead, it's worth it to go to nine. But for the most part, you just uh, stay at eight. Yeah, Karn is coming back along with Joyra and Teferi in Dominaria, which is pretty sweet. I think PUBG is fun. I don't play it as much as I would like to just because I don't have the time. But I think it's pretty fun. Ooh, Mannequin is... That is the nuts. Any sort of mana dork is as good as it gets. Any thoughts on Intruder Alarm? I think since Intruder Solidarity got printed, it's suddenly legit modern combo. Turn three infinite tokens, two card combo. Ah, yeah. I, it does seem like it's gotten better with Steward of Solidarity. I still... I just haven't figured out a way to make it work, unfortunately. But it's definitely something I'm interested in continuing to try to make work. Silverfin Kirin. 3-3 three, three flying when you cast a spirit and a cane spell. Gain control of creature with spells converted mana cost until end of turn. Well, flying hill giant. Pretty good. Ooh, summon apes. Menacing. Opponent's got some aggressive threats. Man, there's some world where we lose, even with our mana dorks, because our opponents just hit super aggressive things. Uh, so in Momir, your deck is all lands, and you have this Momir avatar that you start with that lets you, once a turn, pay X and discard a card, and you get a random creature of that converted mana cost. So basically, it's all random creatures. That's the entire format. Well, let's get in with our flyer. We're going to take a big hit here. Put our bone to 21. Opinion on Ords of Control for one last standard FNM with energy tomorrow. Uh, I haven't played it, but I like Ords of Control, so I think it's a fine option for your last pre-Rivals of Ixalan FNM. And we'll take 9, down to 11. Hopefully our increased mana production is going to pay off here at some point. Ooh, Linval is nice. That's a big flyer, and it helps maintain our life total. Get in for three. Am I on top of the figure out the stream settings for PUBG plan? I have not got to that yet. I have not had time to work on that, but it is something that is uh, still in my mind. Bone it. Spine Biter. In fact, have it assign combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Well, that's guaranteed infect damage, I guess. Opponent. Getting in. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll take it. Down to 11. Well, we're reaching the 8 drop slot, finally. Discard a forest. Ooh, destroy a land. That's a good ability. Uh, we still can't attack very well. Hit our opponent. 
Baz the Dirt. Down to 15. We're close. Opponent stuck with sixes. Ooh, Edgar Markov. Uh, does have haste. Can that kill us? It's a 5-5 five, five haste with first strike? Ugh. That might actually be very bad for us. All right, block, block. I'm glad they didn't attack with Edgar Markov. That would have been really bad. Well, come on, huge hasty eight drop flyer to just win the game. Like, Hellkite Tyrant. Ooh, Seraph. Okay, pass the turn. We got to play defense and try to close it out next turn. Hey Seth, long time viewer, first time commenter. Thank you for making awesome content and loving what you do. It's amazing that you can do something you love and get something to the community as well. As long as you make it, I'll watch it. Oh, well, thank you so much, Sawyer. Thank you, thank you. Definitely appreciate the, <laughs> the kind words. Wow. That is some interesting art. Lady Kadera. I think we just win here. Six... Seven, yeah, we should have lethal. As long as we can keep all of our flyers alive. Because we'll turn on Threshold for Silver Seraph. Opponent's going to infect us. Yeah, Edgar Markov is actually scary. So we get some infect. Six. Uh, we probably should just make a zero drop, but we're gonna we're gonna be sporting and make a seven and risk phaging ourselves. All right, not a phage, which I think means thirteen and five. I think that's just lethal. And we got the GGs from Crewman Wilson. Good game, good game. Oh man, well. We finished two and two in our pre-release, but had some fun with Rivals of Exelon. So if you're heading to pre-release this weekend, go with Ascend. Ascend seems super awesome, really easy to turn on. That was a big takeaway. Try to avoid the whole five mana silver gill adapts. That did not seem awesome. So anyway, everyone, I think that is going to bring us to the end of the stream for tonight. So if you missed any of it, check it out on the replay YouTube tomorrow. Of course, normal YouTube can find all the series against odds went up last night commander clash tomorrow a bunch more rivals of ixalan stuff coming out so keep an eye out for that as well merch page for tokens and t-shirts and play mats to support the stream and the channel and site so everyone thank you so much it's always fun definitely appreciate you hanging out thanks for all the donations and subs and all that stuff it was amazing so yeah have a wonderful pre-release this weekend have a wonderful weekend in general you all are great and uh be back on tuesday with another one time to play some janky constructed we got to get back on the janky constructed train so have a wonderful weekend and i will talk to you